100 days as a nuclear engineer in nuclear craft overhaul versus a parasite apocalypse. Yeah, that's right. I'm finally playing the new nuclear craft overhaul. I guess here we go. Ooh. And it's amazing. Well, minus the whole run and escape parasite update trying to kill me. And oh boy, do they try to kill me. I think we got it right there. Holy. <laughs> Are you serious? Just wait till day 75. Things get crazy. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. But first, we're going to need to survive the frozen icy Alps with tough as nails, making everything, well, pretty tough. Oh my God. Then we need to build a massive new overhaul nuclear reactor. We need to use that reactor to help us stop the new stronger parasites and, well, a ton of other things too. I won't spoil it. It's in it's inside. Oh no, 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 no. Is this video almost three hours long? Yes. Yes, it is. Is it worth it? This is my best 100 days video yet, so yes, yes it is. And it all starts in these tiny hot springs in the middle of a frozen mountain winter. So, on day one, we wake up soaking wet. And no, it's not because we peed the bed, that's just because of the hot springs. And it's a good thing too, because in this frozen mountainside biome, the cold will quickly freeze us and make us start losing health fast. And no, by the way, we can't just run away to a better biome because this entire world is frozen. So we need to start to gather supplies for survival right now. Hey, little buddy. Look, at least we freeze to death. We uh, got each other, right? Does look pretty though. And in this mod pack, we're using tough as nails. That means we can't go around and punch down trees for wood. In the middle of the day, it does seem to be warm enough so that we can spend a little bit of time to look around. Then I start to get worried because I think I might start to take some damage. So I run back down into the hot springs. They do keep me warm down here, but I actually find out later that just being in any cave or any kind of shelter like this does keep you a little bit warm. So while in this cave, we get some flint, we smash on a rock to get flint shards. While I'm doing this, I do have the weird thought that we're going from these little flint shards all the way up to being a nuclear physicist and all of it starting from just these sticks and stones. For right now, we're gonna head down into the caves to look for a spider. We avoid some zombies, and soon we find some. Okay. Now we took, we took no damage right there. That's actually not bad. Ooh. Ow, perfect. So after that, we have a stick, some string, and some flint. And we can make a primitive hatchet. And this is a huge step forward. This right here, 100% saved our lives. And I can't stress that when you can't punch a tree, watching your very first tree fall down it's a pretty big boost to your morale. We needed this. Next, we have to manually cut all the logs into planks by hand. So we lay them all out, then we chop them all up. We're making good progress here. We still have a little bit of daylight, so we chop down another tree. I go to the old hot springs, and I get a little bit of water. We have enough flint to make a flint pickaxe. And that's good too, because all of this cold and drinking this bad water has got us to pretty low health. And the first night hasn't even started, so we gotta be careful. Just before I run into some shelter, we grab a little bit of coal to make torches and to burn furnaces for warmth. And while I'm here, I start to make my plans. If we survive, I wanna make this little valley into my own little cabin. But right now, there's no time to think about that. We get headed back into the caves. Oh yeah, you know, just a... Uh... The blood aurora, not ominous at all, no, no. Even though these caves are much warmer, we should still make a furnace and start cooking to make a little extra warmth. They make a little bit of heat. And with the sound of those zombies right next to us, we should probably make a little bit of armor too. First, with our few pieces of copper, we make a saw, a pick, and I even make a stone sword. Now, normally, I wouldn't pick a fight if I'm this weak, but we have no food source in this frozen biome. We're getting pretty cold and pretty hungry. We chow down on some rotten flesh, not one of my prouder moments, but it does keep us alive. I'm gonna try, I think I can get so that they can actually hit me. Maybe, I I don't know if I like this right here. Oh, why do they have diamond arm? Oh, oh, they got armor? They have like soldier armor. Oh, cool, great. Yeah, that's good, that's what I want. My vision starts to get blurry here, and I was a little bit confused for a second. But pretty quickly, I realize what's happening. I need to run back up top and get some water from the hot springs because extreme thirst makes you start to go blind. I head back down on the start of day two and just like the zombies I'm fighting, I'm starting to get hungry for some more flesh. 
but also we managed to get a few ores while we're down here. When you're this early in the game, I, I gotta say, I'm right on the edge with survival here. I just need to keep pushing forward and start mining to help us get better gear so that we'll have a better chance to survive. And, of course, we're also going to get started on the real reason that we all came to watch this video, the new Nuclear Craft Overhaul goodies. We're going to start out with the good old decay generator to start making some power. But honestly, as I soon find out, these things suck even more in overhaul, so we're going to quickly rush to some solar panels, ASAP. Sadly, my thirst gets the better of me before I can do that. I need to run back up to the surface and get another drink. But I do manage to hatch up a little plan. I cook up some of the iron I've mined and I make a bucket. Now I can carry water with me wherever I go. I'll use my last bit of iron to throw a little shield on top of that and we're set. In fact, why not upgrade it to a copper shield? And since we're working on our defense, let's get some iron armor too. And at the very end of day two, we run out of iron, predictably. So we're going to have to use copper instead, and uh, ooh, its stats are pretty far down there. I, I think that's equal to leather armor. Ugly. But it'll have to do for now. Speaking of copper being ew, I head down into this beautiful glowing mushroom cave. I find my old friends uranium and thorium. But because we have a copper pick, we can't actually farm them yet. So I make a little pit stop here, make a crafting table, and then with it, I make a furnace. Ooh, 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 okay, okay. I mean, look how tanky they are. There's like a soldier zombies coming out of nowhere. All right, I think I might actually have to be careful here. These are like a lot stronger than I thought they were going to be. You know, after hearing myself there, I think this might have been a bad video to add live voiceovers. I'm forced to try and heal, eating rotten flesh and drinking dirty water, but I do get the iron pick, so I'm not leaving here without the radioactive elements. Sure enough, we do finally manage to get that redstone, and now we can make a decay generator. And we even get some magnesium for some batteries for later on. I find this nickel, and I decide to pass it up. Ooh, big mistake. I even do a little bit of spelunking for some diamonds too. Already on day three. Not bad. I mean, well, assuming we don't drown right here, or freeze to death in these icy waters. Man, the whole world really is out to kill me today. Luckily, Big Brain Captain does have a bucket of lava, which gives us super fast heat anywhere we go. Finally, we grab a little bit of lead for the decay generators as well. Ooh. These are- Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. Easy. Dude, these zombies are so annoying. Dude! Oh, I'm out of- I'm out of- I have- I have a saw. I have a saw. So yeah, it turns out um, copper saw is not the meta. I decide to make a diamond pick because eventually we will need to mine obsidian. But let's head back up to the surface first. So at the end of day four, we pop up into the mountains to see this blood aurora. Back at base, we can start to make our way towards our first nuclear craft toy, the decay generator. First, we're gonna have to get one of the furnaces cooking up lead. In the meantime, I do decide to add a little bit of storage, but I didn't want this to be our home. I wasn't gonna make a bunker video, not again. But for now, I'm stuck down here. With this lava in the base, rotten flesh in our tummies, and some dirty water here, we have all the scuffed things we need to kinda survive. You know, it is still better than my apartment IRL. We get our very first decay generator. But before we set it down, let's try to get some food that isn't just zombie butt. I find this area here and decide I'll set up a farm right here. We make our first man who is making a press. Ah, got you there. Yeah, I decide to hold off on making the manufactory because I need this press to help me with surviving first and foremost. Speaking of surviving, we can now set down our old trusty taters. Then we can get back to cooking up some of our nuclear elements, <laughs> finally. Next, I try to use the press, but Harvest Craft isn't actually compatible with this wood. So now I'm sad. And What's better for when you're feeling sad than going on a crazy shopping spree? So the next thing we're going to focus on is making a market. Unfortunately, to build a market, you need four wool. We're going to need a lot more string, so we have the exact same problem we did on day one. Now, in real life, llamas can totally make fleece, but no, llamas in Minecraft can't be cool, I guess. So now I have to find a new way to cope with my depression, and we're headed back to the nuclear craft fun. I set down our very first block of thorium. 
I then grab the decay generator and plop it right on top. Now it's time to make that manufactory. We make a copper solenoid and we have my favorite machine already built. We add that straight onto the generator and get it powered. Oh, hmm, kind of powered, not, not really powered. Like I said, turns out the decay generator is one of the first big changes in the overhaul. Not in a good way either, but I'll show you that a little bit later. For now, we have an iron sword and some delicious flesh. So let's head back into the mines. Uh, oh, what? Yo. Yo, man. look how fast he is. Look how fast this zombie is. I get... No, 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 no. Oh my God. Dude, what is that? Dude, if I, dude. Yep, turns out the zombies are super tanky. What if I get, oh, no, no, no. Uh-uh. And sneaky too. This one pops right in my base and almost ends our playthrough. I get back to the mines only to find some of this Russian zombies. Oop, don't get political. Don't get political. Next, we find this spawner. And that's cool, but more importantly, we find these chests with some loot. Sure, this, this golden apple is great, but the real treasure here is the string. Now we are a lot closer to getting that market. Fortunately, we are no closer to getting to use our manufactory, though. Literally, like, no closer. Remember, guys, it's been an entire day now, and the energy level hasn't gone up a little bit. On top of that, my taters are only barely starting to grow. I'm really having a bad day here. I clear out a little bit of snow. I'm getting desperate here. Luckily, this overgrown stone acts like grass, and it can be bone meal. Woo! Ugh. Thank God. Like, legit, we needed that so bad. With those plant fibers, we can make string, they can make wool, they can make the market. I still have the old version of Harvestcraft 2, aka the better version, yeah, I said it. And now we can buy some real crops. The very first thing we get is peas. N now hold on, you hear me out here. It gets better, I promise. Peas grow year round. And at this point, I have this really weird sinking feeling that it might be the wrong season for potatoes. So peas are just to be safe right now. But what also grows year round? That's right, tea leaves. And they don't totally suck to eat. I told you it gets better. Just like I feared, even though we're inside a cave, we still start to freeze and we have to go huddle around the lava for warmth. But as soon as we warm up, we go back to plant hemp, soy, and tea. Ooh, true hipster diet. Then in legit like three minutes in game, we start to freeze again. We really have to work on getting this whole area heated up. Tough as nails is, well, it's tough. So I decide right here that I'm gonna turn this whole frozen valley into a tropical oasis. This is gonna be the main objective for my entire playthrough. And it's starting with some banana trees, but it'll have to wait. I don't have enough emeralds to just waste on trees. They're a little too expensive. First, we're gonna have to focus on getting some animals instead. And we're gonna be using the nutrition mod to make things even more of a realistic survival challenge. This chicken egg here will be a good source of protein. Then with our last few little emeralds right here, we're gonna get some onions and some cotton. Now we'll never run out of string again. Honestly, three out of 10, worst farm ever. But hey, at least we could add a little chicken coop with a little chicken. And yes, I mean little, it's literally like a two by three. Hey, little cuck. Mr. Cluck. <laughs> hey, Mr. Cluck. <laughs> After that embarrassment, I craft up our first uranium block and it helps to get us a little bit more power because we literally have none after two whole days. And that kind of shows me something is wrong here. So I go to check the thorium block and sure enough, it's already decayed into lead after less than a day. Old nuclear craft would have these blocks give you a little bit of power for like seven days maybe, but this means that in overhaul, the decay generator is essentially useless. In my first 100 days video in a bunker, I could use the decay generator all the way up to a fission reactor. This time, <laughs> that is not going to happen. We're gonna need solar panels to bridge the gap for sure. But first, our poor nutrition is giving us mining fatigue already. So we start out by making a pot, which we can use to turn water into salt. Then we make a mortar and pestle so we can grind this wheat that we found in those chests into flour. Then we add the flour to the water and to the salt in a mixing bowl. Finally, we bake the dough in bakeware and we have our very first real food. That just sounds like bread with extra steps. And even though we pound down like six loaves right here, we still need a whole lot of help. So let's try to squeeze a few eggs out of Mr. Cluck. Man, I'm so dumb. Hold up, wait a minute. 
dude. Dude, this already decay. No. Yeah, that's right, Captain. Essentially, nine uranium ingots can only make us one pulverized coal. That's how nerfed this is. Dude, I don't get it. I guess the I guess overhaul doesn't want you to use decay generators because I don't know what to do. That like messes up our whole plan. So we fry up an egg, and we get a little bit of help with protein. It's just enough to fix our mining fatigue. Also, we get two extra hearts on top of that, so this is actually working out. Since farming is like the only thing going okay for me, I decide to grab some more crops and to go dig up a bunch of dirt to add to the farm. At least Harvestcraft isn't going to betray me. I hope. Tough as nails, however, is still being a huge pain in my frozen butt. Dude, what is this? Do I have to walk back? No, wait, I got an idea. There. Problem, Problem kind of solved, right? I only get like a little bit further on the farm and I have to come back to get warmth again. So now that we have some lava going in this room, we can finally get a proper farm going down in the cave. Once again, it is starting to look like I'm making another bunker after all. We get our very first soybeans, but we can't eat them yet because we really need to plant them. Then we get another egg and we can't eat that because I, I break it. Dude. And after being disappointed by everything, I decide the last thing I have going for me is mining. We make a small mine down in the back of the cave till I run into some obsidian, but I decide we can use this. I cut out a little portal in this wall of obsidian instead of farming the 10 obsidian and setting them up. Also, we get a little bit of green tea, so I'm not totally starving. But of course, I can never have any good luck without something like this. Wow. Wow, look how tanky he is. Imagine if it was this tanky and he was the fast one. This is... Dude, that's not good. That's really scary. Just before I decide to head to the nether, I make one last attempt to make our decay generator work, and I farm as many nuclear elements as I can. I'm pretty upset about this whole thing, but I do find one light at the end of the tunnel. Because inside of this mine shaft, there's a set of exoskeleton boots that have diamond stats, which is good, but also they negate fall damage. Yep, I'm basically playing Apex Legends because I have no fall damage anymore. Finally, I mine up as much as I can and I head home just in time because we are super low on food and water and I'm having this much of a struggle and there aren't even parasites yet. <sighs> I can't I can't tell if this is beautiful or if it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I made up my mind. It's terrifying. I'm going to go with terrifying. If that light, if that if this isn't our valley right here, we might die to the elements. Luckily, it turns out this was my valley, and we barely make it home. Jeez, just barely. We drink some water, and all that does is let us see just how low our saturation is. <laughs> Look at this. This almost looks like some Great Depression grainy footage. And it makes sense, too. I'm really feeling a Great Depression, because the food situation is pretty dire here. Luckily, however, I do manage to get a few eggs, and this time I am not going to break them. I craft up some fried eggs and slowly cure my colorblindness. And yes, I know that's not what colorblind is. You know what I mean. I then decide to jeopardize my health again, and I start to play with a ton of radioactive elements. We get one thorium and three uranium blocks and set them all up on our generator. With the old decay generator, we would be able to start doubling our ores like crazy with this setup, but we need to hold off on that and focus on getting two graphite dust by processing two coal. Everything else is going to have to wait right now. We run the pulverized coal through one more time, but I can see that the blocks are already starting to decay. I'm serious, you guys. We still somehow managed to get our two graphite. Now we have to save the rest of our power so that we can make just one crushed quartz. That's how desperate this is. We craft up a flint and steel and head to the nether. We managed to very quickly find some quartz and farm them up, which is great. We then managed to very quickly step on a blazing blossom and catch on fire which is not great. Uh, ow. Oh, no way. Oh, what a waste. Ooh. And in my panic, I waste a golden apple. Now, by day 10, we have our first quartz ready to be processed. Unfortunately, with our super low health, we're stuck listening to this anxiety-boosting heart rate because we still have no food. Luckily, our save and grace, we have a little bit of tea to save our lives, both in-game and IRL. We only have one block of uranium now. This really could be a problem. Now we just have to wait and pray. 
In the meantime, we can make some dairy products out of our soybeans. The press is the only way to get dairy without cows, so at least we were smart enough to get this. Looking over my nutrition graphs, I see that all that we need now is fruit, and I have an idea for that too. I make a pumpkin farm on the surface because I'm super driven to not be stuck living in this bunker. I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise, surprise. I'm super stubborn. Welcome to the captain's TV. Since we have some netherrack, we can make a more permanent heath fire in our base, which is great. But what's really good is we finally have one crushed quartz. I love this stuff so much, I could kiss this little white pile. But this isn't Miami. So instead, we're going to use it to make our first solar panel. Honestly, if you guys are going to play this mod pack or play overhaul at all, rush a solar panel. Do not rely on decay generators, I'm promising you guys. We place the panel on the top of the manufactory and start to dig straight up to the surface. In the middle of the night, yeah I know. But since we're waiting for the daybreak, we might as well use our time here to make our usual hopper setup. For anybody out there who hasn't seen any of my nuclear craft videos, hi, welcome to my channel. But also, just to get you caught up, what I'm doing here is making a hopper that goes into the manufactory to automatically load it with all of our raw ores. It's nothing too special, I'm not like reinventing the wheel here, it's just this is very important to boost your nuclear craft early game before you get item ducks. I go up top really quickly to see where the actual hole down of the solar panel is, then I head back down there to warm up around the fire and drink a little warm tea. Feeling refreshed, I see that the solar panels are fired up and getting us some power. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm excited about that little bit of power, that's how bad the decay generators were. I decide to buy a cow at the market, then Running the silken tofu through, through the press again gives us firm tofu and soy milk. Not really a fan of soy milk, but look, I'll take anything I can get right now. Ugh. Soy milk or rotten flesh? I don't... Oh, hey, that's nice. Yeah, soy milk or rotten flesh? I don't know what's worse here. I think so, I think tofu goes through prote protein too. But yeah, we're still going to have to get a cow. We're still going to need a cow. But instead, I make some steamed peas, which is pretty much just as bad. Don't tell your parents I said that, by the way. <clears throat> Eat your vegetables, kids. Now, we're going to get some quartz, which means more solar panels. But first, let's make a little pen for our Moo Moo Girl. We get some coal cooking to make graphite, and soon we have another solar panel ready to go. If you think about it, this technically doubles our power supply. For now, we set the second panel on the side of the manufactory and start to dig up to give it sunlight. Solar panels only need one block directly above them to be clear, so even though we're way down in this tunnel, we still manage to get full power all day long. We get our very first milk, thank you Betsy, and have to fight off this guy. <laughs> I think they're coming from the mine shaft, I guess. On the bright side, we do get this little upgrade in our armor, it's only a little rotten inside. Also on the bright side, it's bright outside. So we're getting our manufactories working once again. Now we're going to be grinding up some cobblestone into sand, because that's the only way we're going to get sand in these mountains. And we do need sand. We need it for glass, and we need glass so that we can make some flux ducts, aka power lines. We craft up six of them, and pretty quickly we craft up six more. Then we get rid of this dumb block of lead and this annoying generator. Now we can run a power cable all the way up to the surface. Once we get up here, we can clear out a little area and start to make room for our solar panels. Not just the two, I craft up a third, then a fourth. While we still have a little bit of daylight here on day 12, we set up the two new panels. And for all of my complaining, I actually do really like solar panels. I go down and I grab the ones that are in the bunker, and I craft up another and yet another. I make a quick little run to the mines to get a little bit more copper so I can make solenoids. I hope I'm saying solenoids, I hope I'm saying that right. We make a total of five more panels. So by the end of the day, unfortunately it's dark, but we do have a grand total of eight basic panels, almost completing our full little set here. So after this day of making some real progress in nuclear craft, I think I've earned a proper meal. Pancakes. Pancakes will be amazing. I have to say, when I watch these videos, I actually do get like hungry looking at them right now. Oh no, did you just make a break for it, little prisoner? Oh well, now I have to make an example of you. And maybe I'll even make a chicken pot pie out of you. But for now, Let's get some seeds and trick the rest of the escapees back since Terror doesn't seem to be working on chickens. No oh, wait, you would think the chick... Never mind. I don't want to think about the symbolism too much in that. For now, we're going to craft up a Harvest Craft Ground Trap 
and use all of the grain bait that we've been making. Now sadly, the ground trap actually needs grass to work. I didn't know this. Overgrown stones don't count. I learned this the hard way, so don't repeat what I did and make the same mistake here. One thing that you definitely should do is plant beetroots if you're playing nuclear craft. I know, I know, they're the worst crop in Minecraft, but you'll see very soon why you need them. Very soon. For now, we're going to spend the rest of Lucky Day 13 mining and getting materials for our next machines. After getting a drink of water and eating some roots to keep us going, we get the first material, lapis. When we get home and load this chest up with all of the ores that will eventually be doubled by the manufactory. Then we make a bunch of delicious steam peas, which are good for us. See, I'm a good influence. We start to craft up a key component of a solar panel array piles, AKA early game batteries. To do this, we are gonna need a lot of graphite dust and lead to make basic panels. And basic panels are like the core component of any nuclear craft machine. And next, we make a block of that magnesium we collected earlier. But before we do that, I decide to make a critical thermal expansion machine. Nuclear craft doesn't really have an RF powered furnace, which is sad, but this thermal craft RF furnace will be a core part of our manufacturing setup. It doesn't take anything too crazy either. Just tin, copper, a little bit of gold and redstone, and soon we have a furnace that is pretty fast and doesn't need coal either. I love this thing. Honestly, the manufactory plus the redstone furnace is a setup that's like half the reason I play nuclear craft in the first place. I love this. We just need to plop it directly underneath the manufactory so that things will go from the manufactory down here, get cooked up automatically into bars, and then move down into the chest. Just like a bunch of this magnesium, which means soon we'll have what we need to make two piles. Once we have the two piles, we're gonna set them up on the power cables so that any power that isn't immediately being used by the machines can be stored up and saved inside of them. We have to add them in between the connection or otherwise the piles will make like this feedback loop and they'll just suck up all the power and the machines won't get any. So you have to set them up like this. Power will go down into the pile and then immediately move down towards the machines. Now in nuclear craft, you could just shift and right click the pile to make it an output. But now in overhaul, things have changed a little bit. Well, so much for these. We're gonna need a special tool, the multi-tool. It's a little bit complex and it needs some special alloys, which we don't have yet. We're gonna need to make an alloy furnace, but that's okay, because we're gonna be using this a whole lot much later anyway. First, coal and iron to make steel. And now that we actually have a little bit of steel at our disposal, I decide I'm gonna make a better steel weapon. Now, I love halberds, but I saw that Forge Lab was using a saber, so I'm going to give that one a try instead. Then we head out mining, and I make sure I grab a little bit of lithium on down here so that we can craft up a new Tesla. When we finally get back to base, we combine the steel with some boron to make ferroboron. That's going to be used in the multi-tool. Next, we make some bronze, which kind of feels like we're going back in time technologically, but, but whatever. We combine some tin and copper till we get bronze dust, then cook that up. We take two bars of ferroboron, but the rest of it is gonna be combined with that lithium to make the best alloy in nuclear craft. But more on that later. S sir, sir, could you not? Please? Then just a few seconds later, yes, first tough alloy of overhaul. Woo. We have that best alloy, tough alloy, the core alloy in Minecraft. Now we just need one more complex alloy and that's hard carbon. Now hard carbon is a little bit rough because it requires a diamond. So we are gonna have to sacrifice one to the nuclear craft gods, praise Tom. But it is indeed worth it because soon we have everything we need to make our multi-tool. Now we can properly set up our piles. By clicking on the bottom of the pile with the multi-tool in our hand, it has this red square. That means it's an output. Here, I'll, I'll hold up a torch so you guys can see. See there's the red square instead of that navy blue square. Now, just as day 16 is getting started, we can set up the power to run into the piles from the top, be stored up, and then be used in the machines right away through the outputs. This simple setup right here already makes the solar panels so much more useful. And since at this point we've committed so much to the solar panels, we might as well get a few more of them going. We spend most of that day making more. Finally, I replace my copper leggings with tough alloy ones. They have the same stats as diamond leggings, so yeah, you could say it's an upgrade. But tough alloy does not stop there. Like I said, we're gonna need to use it to make even more advanced machines, like the advanced panels. An advanced solar panel uses three basic panels. Each basic panel makes five RF a tick, and combining them to make the advanced panel makes 20 RF a tick. 
so they're equal to more than the sum of their parts, making it worth it to upgrade if you can. But we need to take a short break from the nuclear craft fun to, well, not starve to death. Veggies are great and all, but we really need some dairy and some fruit. Like, we really badly need dairy and fruit. So I'm pretty happy when I see that I can make yogurt and I can add fruit to it. I even see that you can make pumpkin yogurt too. Is that, is that a real thing, by the way? Has anybody in the comments ever heard of pumpkin yogurt in real life? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to question it. It doesn't matter because we really need it right now. I do plan a banana tree. I was inspired because I actually bought some bananas IRL. But also, I do want this because eventually, remember, we're going to be turning this whole valley into a tropical paradise. And sure enough, we can boost our nutrition and even get a bonus heart out of this. But we're going to need a lot more than this for sure. For now, that'll be okay. Let's wait for the pumpkins to grow and get back to making more solar panels. I make three basic panels, and soon we combine all of those to get another advanced panel. We run this up to the surface on day 17, and we add it to our solar array. Now I love me some clean energy, but you know I'm definitely going to be making a nuclear reactor and an overhaul. That is a huge task. It's much harder. So let's get to mining. You know what? You know what, dude? I don't like your attitude, bro. Your full gold bling thing going on here? Uh-uh. After a full day of mining, on day 18, we get back home and start processing up all of our goodies. Dude, dude, tea should count as thirst, right? It's, it's definitely better than drinking out of a hole in the ground. After loading up our manufactory, I buy a jungle tree because I'm still wanting to make a tropical vacation. Well, this is kind of a little bit of a mistake. You guys will see. We plant it, and then I grab some of my nanners. Next, we're going to be getting our pancakes. So we get some flour, which luckily you can make flour out of soybeans. So that's good. Then combine it with eggs, and we get some batter. Dude, is it, is it weird that every time I play Harvest Craft, I legit get hungry IRL? Like, look at these pancakes, bro. Like, I, I'm hungry right now for pancakes. Ooh, two hearts, nice. But of course, every time I'm sitting around and actually having some fun, it gets ruined by the elements. I'm freezing, and I have to run back to my fire. But even here, I'm right up against the fire, and I still take a good amount of damage. It's a good thing that we have some good nutrition and a few extra hearts, or else I would have froze right there. And while we're waiting for some of those nutritious fruits to grow, we craft up a rock crusher. In old nuclear craft, you could make a reactor without a rock crusher, not an overhaul. And as we add another machine, we're gonna be responsible and make more solar panels. And on the start of day 19, we start to collect all that juicy sunlight. I have to admit, this is a pretty impressive solar ray and should help us get to our next stage, nuclear power. That's where the rock crusher comes in because we need beryllium moderators, which comes from crushing andesite. And sadly, after an entire day mining, looking for andesite, all we could find was this granite. Can, can you make andesite out of granite? There's quartz that you can make diorite. Now you would think I would have already known that, but sure enough, when we get home, I do in fact find out that you need diorite to make andesite or quartz to make diorite. But in my mod pack, I have a better idea. We can use the trusty igneous extruder to turn lava and water into any rock that we need. All this machine takes is a little bit of invar that we already found in that mine shaft and some simple mats again, sure enough, we can make one. Thermal expansion is pretty straightforward and makes every tech-based mod much easier and a little bit funner in my opinion. Speaking of loving thermal expansion, we craft up another machine, the Magma Crucible. This will melt up stone, like simple cobble, into lava, which we can then put in the extruder to make any other block we want. First though, to make the crucible, we need hardened glass using pyrothium dust, and that's going to need blazing powder, so we have to head to the nether. Till we get that, we can still load up the extruder by hand, like the peasants we are. I know, gross. Now, let's head to Hades, because at least in the nether, we won't be freezing to death. Yo, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh man, they there's like a whole army in the portal. Oh, oh, they all got stuck in the portal. The, oh my god, they're all in, they, they all got stuck inside the portal, and now they're all coming up at once. Dude, what's this? Get out of my face. Cool. I know, this, I know this is a waste. I, I don't care. We're done. We're out of here. This is, we're out of here. That's frustrating. That's frustrating because it's like a, it's like a thing in the, oh, now we're going to thirst too. Wow. Well, after that ordeal, we need to quickly heal, then head back in. And this time we do manage to deal with these stinky boys. 
we take a little time to mine up netherrack, which we then use to bridge our way over to this blaze lantern. So with the blazes and the heat getting a little out of control, we have to run on back to the surface. With the heat so bad in the nether, we can really only go down there for a few minutes at a time. While I'm cooling down, I make nuclear craft infinite water sources and place them next to the extruder to automate it. Then we have to head back to the nether. Somehow, this time we got lucky, the blazes have despawned, so I can rush in and grab the lantern and get out. Back in the overworld, I find out that I need a machine to turn the lantern into blazing powder. The pulverizer, yet another thermal machine. Luckily, this is basically the thermal expansion version of the manufactory, so it's a pretty cheap and easy to make machine. Now the whole point of the pulverizer is, it well, it, it pulverizes the lantern, and soon enough, we have blaze powder, and we can mix it with sulfur and redstone to make pyrothium dust. By the way, this is going to be super important when the, uh, you know what, uh, I won't spoil it. This is going to come in handy though, promise you. As for sulfur, it can come from a few places, but we're going to get it just by crushing granite in the rock crusher. Mix the pyro dust with lead and obsidian to get hardened glass. And now we can make the magma crucible. With this, we just add some cobblestone to get lava, then automatically mix it with water, and we can basically 3D print any vanilla stone we want. And yes, that means andesite. We are quickly rolling towards our nuclear reactor materials. In addition to getting beryllium from the andesite, we're going to have to craft up a little bit of diorite as well. Putting that in the rock crusher will make zirconium, but you'll see all of that much later. For now, we're still struggling getting our fruit nutrition in, so we have to head out into the cold and start farming. And pretty soon we get freezing, so what better time than to head to the nether? See, I, I totally planned that out. Yeah, totally, totally calculated. While we're down here, we collect magma cubes, and these have a ton of useful reasons behind them. Oh, well, hello, friend. Come to share my fire? Come to share my sword? Dude, what is ha what's happening right now? I have a hole in the back. I have my I have a back hole. I have a hole. Okay, not like that, guys. Not like that. So after plugging up my back hole, we can start to use the magma blocks. The first thing they're going to be useful for is making heating coils to stop me from freezing every like three minutes. But I'm actually going to take it a step further, and I'm going to collect a little bit of ice as well. The ice obviously is going to help us make cooling coils. We can use these together to make a temperature regulator. So now we're covered no matter what. Now the version that we've made does require RF to work, but I figured that's pretty fair since the whole point of nuclear craft is to make a ton of RF, right? I head up to the surface and I plug it into the solar arrays for a little while, and here it quickly starts to charge up. I don't want to starve all of my other machines though, so I only do this for a few seconds. Then I place the regulator out by itself. Sure enough, it starts to make me nice and toasty even out here in the mountain cold. But soon, I can tell it's going to run out of energy pretty quickly. So we're going to make a ton of heating coils just in case and place them all over the base. These don't need any RF and should keep me warm for the rest of the 100 days, as long as I'm pretty close to them. When I get up top, I can see that the temperature regulator is already melting a ton of snow up here, even though it's currently snowing right now. With the heating coils placed all throughout the valley floor, we should be getting our tropical dream come true pretty quickly. Finally, at the start of day 23, we place a coil in the entrance so that even the cold air coming in will be warmed before it gets inside. I know that that's probably not true. Like there's no such thing as wind in Minecraft, but just let me role play a little bit here. After all, it'll be warming me up as soon as I step into the base. But if we really want to role play, we're going to have to get some of those tropical fruit trees because the captain's nutrition makes it look like he's about to get some scurvy here. If we don't get some fruit real soon. So, with this valley already looking much less blizzardy, we can start to plant some tropical trees. And then I'm going to harvest these saplings once the trees grow. In the meantime, we're still going to be making yogurt and mixing it with pumpkins to get at least some kind of fruit going. And yes, we do have a rogue chicken that made its way into the cow pen, but honestly, Betsy shouldn't be here alone, so I'm okay with this. And at the end of the day, we head out to grab some ores, and I'm already feeling a lot better. Day 24, and now we're finally getting some of that zirconium. Like I said, this is a core component to a fission reactor cell, which is the main power generating block in a fission reactor. No surprise there. Now you guys can really see why a rock crusher is needed to make a reactor. But seriously, that's only like a small change. In truth, I used to be able to make a fission reactor in like 20 days in old nuclear craft, but now, no way. Even though I spent all 24 days working on it, we still need a ton more time to get the overhaul reactor. 
it's going to take us a lot longer. That is, assuming we survive whatever apocalypse is happening on day 25. At the start of day 25, I didn't think much had happened. I was more excited about getting our first enriched uranium, and I was more worried about making some warm clothes for exploring. Speaking of exploring, we go out and find some sugar cane. And then... Oh, that's a volcano. That's 100% a volcano. Oh my god. That's close enough to hit me. So I didn't get to finish my sentence right there because I was terrified, but yes, Captain, that volcano is 100% close enough to our base to hit it with lava boulders. That, that's close enough to hit us. That volcano is close enough to hit us. And I'm thinking now, too, it might even hit the solar panels. Yeah, that's bad. So now, before that happens, we need to make this bunker self-reliant, because we could lose everything that's above us, including the solar panels. As for right now, we need to use the centrifugal separator, which means we need to get nickel. Yeah, remember when I didn't pick that up from before? Dude, honestly, I would have just taken an earthquake. So, on day 26, I come up to the surface. Oh, dude. Oh, this is, this is huge. This is such a, this is a really big one. Okay, it only has like a, it only has a little bit of lava. I probably have some time. Oh man, look how close this is. It's right here. So I pull myself together, because we need to hurry. I get some nickel mixed with copper to get Constantine. Now, with some simple tin and copper stuff like that, we can get the centrifugal separator. This is great, because it turns magma creams into some easy slime and blaze powder. And this will make me a lot safer. But it kind of doesn't really help that much to make the base safer, though. The magma blocks get pulverized and turned into magma cream, which gets turned into slime and blaze powder. Now the slime is useful because it helps us make cooling and heating liners that can go underneath our gear. So even if we lose the heating coils, I won't become a Captain Popsicle. Ex excuse me, sir. I'm busy. Why am I, why am I burning? I'm starting to realize the cold isn't the real problem anymore. Oh, the lava. The first danger of the volcano. Now I have to stay in water to keep cool while I'm down here and I'm struggling to make a cooling liner. It's kind of crazy to think of how quickly things switch like that. I do have a quick trick though, to try to make the valley and the solar panels a little bit safer. I'm thinking that even if, it, even if the trees burn down, I could quickly replace them with bone mealing them. Like it's better than like replacing them one by one. It's better than replacing the panels. I know that's because it's like a tree, it's flammable. I know that's scuffed, but that's the best I have. So we have a little bit of a plan for the top. And at least we can say that the bunker farm here is safe. Even if it's getting burning hot down here. It has to be that there's lava under the base, heating up like everything. We use the ice to make packed ice. Then we can combine that with the slime that we're getting from the separator and make cooling goo. Now we just need some string. Now this would have pretty much been impossible if we were trying to get string like we were on day one. But since we're growing cotton, we might actually be able to do this. If we can rush a nuclear reactor, and just saying that sentence out loud sounds crazy, then maybe the solar panels won't be too important after all. Now we can combine tin or zirconium to make zircaloy, which you need to make reactor cells. Then I head out to the mines to find out. Yup, yup, I told you. I told you there was lava. It's like it's like 30 blocks below us. I knew it. I knew this was what's happening. I've never been so upset to be right. So the, vol it's the volcano is close enough so that it's flooding the floors under us with lava. Only like 30 blocks below us. Look at it. Look at it this way. I. I promised you guys I'd melt this whole valley, right? And so, I decide that if we're going to heat up, we might as well go all the way. I'm going to make a border around the valley to stop any lava that comes flowing from the volcano. But on top of that, if we already fill it with lava, then this will stop some of the zombies from flooding right into our valley. Maybe even the parasites. Remember, those are coming too. <gasps> oh, why is this so spicy? So, we start to set out more and more lava, and we cover the side of the valley that has the solar panels. So maybe, hopefully, the zombies won't be able to get to them. And, now we have this beautiful tree, providing us a little bit of protection from up above. 
However, this is only the beginning. I want to cut this down and replant the saplings to get even more coverage. And yes, again, I couldn't figure out why they weren't growing here. Like, it's pretty obvious now watching this back, but yeah. Yeah, I'm dumb. Please do not plant saplings in the snow and repeat my mistakes. I am, however, smart enough to get our very first overhaul reactor casing. The outermost part of a fission reactor. But to get even more resources, we're going to have to start mining again. And to avoid the lava, we have to make another mine heading the other direction. Overhaul is tough. Like, I like it because the whole point of nuclear craft is to be like big end game, but it's just like for me to make these 100 day videos, it's just a lot. If I did like a full 50 hours, I might be able to get the full mod pack in because 100 days is only going to be like half it. I know there's good ores underneath that lava. Like I'm going to have to go further away from my base to get diamonds. Nope, nope, nope. Stop, stop. Oh, he has like, no, he has like no knockback. Back at home, we unload a whole inventory of ores. So all that panicking and complaining, turns out it was worth it, mostly. On day 29, I finally get the hint and start to put some saplings in dirt without snow on them. And finally, we set down the very first parts of our overhaul reactor. This design is going to be a five by five by five. And it's another design that I stole from Tom, the nuclear craft creator. That being said, we still have a lot of work to do and a whole lot more casing to make. I just need to make sure we have enough lead because we keep running out somehow. And by that night, we have the basic elephant's footprint put down in our valley. It's looking good. I also managed to make a warming liner for my chest plate, but sadly it's not compatible with nuclear craft tough alloys, so now I'm sad. I decided to get a little bit of farming done now to make myself feel better, just as the gray scale starts to kick in. I take out my final little bit of anger on Cluck's family, and we make ourselves a ton of dough. Add some chicken, taters, and carrots. Voila! Chicken pot pie. Grain, protein, and veggies. Perfect. I think chicken pot pie might be my favorite Harvest Craft food. Maybe. It's, it's that or green tea is good. But I mean pancakes are good. Blueberry pancakes are good. Yogurt's mid. <laughs> Day 30. And we get to cutting down the mega spruce trees, because even though there hasn't been any volcanic activity yet, we still need a lot of saplings ready to go for when there is. And this is pretty much what I do all day growing trees and cutting them down with my tough alloy tools. I know the volcano is coming soon, and I need to make protection for this reactor. I have no idea if a boulder strike will cause a meltdown, but uh, I don't really want to find out. Finally, over here, I set a tree on the ridge that I'll harvest later, but if you guys don't see what I'm doing right here as foreshadowing, you're not paying attention. That night, we craft up over another 50 casings, and soon we have the entire bottom of the reactor set up. That's good news. The fact that the lava moat doesn't stop the zombies not so good news. So we head underground again. We need to move about a hundred blocks away from the volcano. Sure enough, we find some uranium that isn't buried by lava. Back at base, I let my guard down a little bit right here. I'm happy with the reactor progress so far, and so I focus a little bit on boosting up the mini industry starting with another manufactory. I then use the hopper to connect the same chest for loading, and hopefully we'll double the rate at which we double our ores. Until, on day 31, this guy reminds me that we don't have the steel saber anymore. I broke it when we were down in the mines before. So I stop and make another saber, only this time we're going diamond. On day 32, I decide to make some more solar panels, thinking that now we're pretty safe, right? Don't be jealous, I'm coming back. Yes, I was talking to the reactor right there, don't judge me. I'm not going crazy. Sadly, we need much, much more steel and tough alloy for the reactor, so I have to take a break from doing all this. I decide to keep working on one more advanced panel that night. Now, we have more advanced panels than basic ones. That night, we make a diamond chest plate, and I know, that's boring, it's vanilla, but we need to do this so that we can fit it with the warm lining and finally start to conquer the elements. All we need now is a little bit more string to make some cooler pants so the heat doesn't get me but I still need cotton. So on day 33, I head up to go get some when... Oh, oh, oh no, it's erupting. Oh no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. How close is it? How close is it for real? Oh my God, it's right there. 
Now, a little bit crazy, but if there is some good news, I can clearly see that the lava flow stops well short of my valley. Oh, man. Oh, no, it's already started. It's already started. Oh, my God. It's going to hit my base. Dude, look at how big it is. It's going to It's gonna for sure be... It's right there. My base is right... Oh, my God. It already hit my tree. No way. It's already hitting. It's already hitting my base. Oh, it's already hitting. It's already hitting. Oh, no. I, I, I don't want to be a bunker boy again. Like, I don't want to go underground, but I mean, what do I do? You know? I'm forced to break down the reactor and pull all the casing back into my bunker for now. The solar panels are still exposed, and this isn't good. I start to try to grow more trees because I'm trying to make a covering for them. Because with the volcano fully grown and spewing lava boulders, we need to make a covering for real now. Then, one day, while I'm in my base... Oh no. Oh, no way. Oh man, if it hits something up top... Okay. Dude, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, it's right there. Dude, it's everywhere. Bro, it's right up there. Uh, okay. So, that night I start to set out some dirt. I want to grow a tree, but I decide it has to be bigger than even a mega tree if it wants to really cover us. I make a much bigger dirt area, and I start to set out a 3 by 3 huge tree trunk myself. I want to make a huge tree that covers the entire valley, even if I have to make it by hand. I gotta admit though, right here, I am kinda panicking and rushing. And now, I'm trying to make a wraparound walkway to get to the top quickly. I want to get up here and replant trees if I need to, even if this makes it look really ugly. I keep working with all of the spruce that I've been collecting for the past few days, but I need to hurry. Every few minutes, another boulder lands, and like legit gives me a heart attack. When I'm pretty happy with this height, I start to add some dirt here. I'm going to plant another mega spruce tree so that I can grow it. I also make the leggings with the cooling liner. So finally, we will have full protection from all the elements. But I hardly have time to celebrate. I need to keep moving. As I'm out cutting up another tree, I see that the central tree has finally grown. This is good. It gives me a ton of protection, especially over the central part of the base where the industrial machines are. But a lot of the valley is still exposed and we're gonna need more tree. That night, I go out and start to shear some fir tree leaves. Cause at this point, I need anything I can get. Next, I'm gonna head to the nether so I can get some bone meal to bone meal up the spruce trees. I use nether rack to build over to get this bone meal in the lava and I grab as much as I can, as fast as I can. Dude, why am I, I'm like sweating IRL. I can, I can like legit feel this thirst in real life. Luckily, I go up and I see that our tree is still standing, but from this angle, it's obvious we need a lot more covering. I see these saplings next to the crater and I bone meal them. Then I start chopping them down to get more wood ASAP. I start to build up even higher, but I still need more wood. This is becoming a real project. I decide to make stairs to make getting up and down much easier. And I get almost all of the stairs set up, and I try to cut some of the wood when this happens. No way that just happened. Dude. Dude, that's so dumb. This mod pack it does have a mod in it that makes cutting down trees happen all at once. It's a little bit buggy, and sometimes it makes stuff like this happen. I was really discouraged after that, so I decided to switch up my strategy, and now I'm going to quickly build up, and instead I'm going to try to cover the whole thing by hand. By day 36, I start the painful process of trying to use spruce and fir leaves and make any kind of covering I can. I actually start to make a pretty good looking umbrella over the heart of the base. No lava boulders have murdered me yet, so there's that. <laughs> oh. That'll ne that'll never not be scary. Dude, every time you every time you take a fall like that, that'll never not be scary. I'll never get used to that. I will say, every time I fall, I do temporarily forget that these boots will save us. It's pretty scary. Okay, so the more and more I start to expand the coverage, the more and more safe I feel. I take a second here to make myself some donuts. And this is kind of nice. I mean, it's like the only thing in the mod pack that's not trying to actively kill me right now. Or, well, I, I guess donuts are so unhealthy that maybe they are trying to kill me. Oh, well. Speaking of slowly, I see that that night, this tree just isn't coming along fast enough. Now, it might not look pretty, but I think I have to go back to our first plant. I get some more saplings that night. On day 37, we get a couple of branches up at the top of the tree. 
I start to add as many of the fern leaves as I can. It's not pretty, but at this point, I'm going for protection more than looks. Finally, I get a light covering over the entire valley. If I build in the valley down here, I'll at least have a little bit of coverage, at least until the tree gets hit. But the more I build, the bigger the tree gets, the more the lag starts to get out of control. Okay, like, look at this. I set down a couple of, like, that, look at that, look at that. I'm not even doing that in the video. Look at this. Look at how bad this is. What's happening? This isn't the recording or any, this is the, this is going to crash my game. And at some points, it's legit like half a second for every block I take. And it looks like we might even freeze up. <laughs> no pun intended. Look, I know I've made a lot of YouTube videos where I have a ton of lag going on, but this is, this is too much. I'm still desperately trying to cover my base. But at this point, it's becoming so difficult to play the game that it's going to be looking pretty harsh. Also, like, it's fun in the beginning, but after a while, the thirst is just kind of frustrating. When I see it on day 38, I know it's ugly, but I can't work on it, or I'm afraid the game will crash. That night, I have a new plan, and like I said, it means going back to the first plan. I'm going to set out a few branches that are lower down here on the tree, then place some dirt, and then, once again, grow some mega trees from here. I think that it looks a lot better, and it has a whole lot less lag. I fight through the still frame drops and get the mega trees going, and it already looks way more natural, and it should be thicker, better protection from the boulders. I rush over and I power grow the second tree, and I'm liking this plan much better. Now we still have a lot of work to do, but if I'm bone mealing the trees, I can make this done a lot faster and start to get towards the nuclear stuff. I do spend a little bit of time trying to make the walkway a little bit nicer, but every block is just such a pain to place at this point, I kind of have to give up. I even try to turn the render distance down to two in pure desperation. But still, check out what is happening to this tree. Like there are full on two seconds of freeze. I'm not adding this in the video, this, ju this just isn't working. And it's not like a glitch with spruce trees, they're working just fine, it's only the main tree. And I know I'm going over this a lot and I'm talking about it. The only reason I'm showing you this is to give you all the reasons why I decided to change the mod pack up on day 40. I know this isn't part of the 100 day challenge. I really wanted to keep on adding challenges, but clearly one of the mods is just broken here and I'm worried that it's the volcano one. So at the start of day 40, I see my tree and I really want to get some more work done on it. I'm at least trying to cut away some of the fern blocks, hoping that that helps out the lag a little bit. And then I notice something. I'm super hot even way out here in the snow. And I think that Tough as Nails might be getting tricked by this huge quote unquote cave that I'm making and making a ton of extra heat. So I was looking it up a little bit and sure enough, Tough as Nails is a discontinued mod. And because of that, it does have some problems, especially with newer mods coming along. I even looked it up, the RL craft, which is all about making tough survival that was based around Tough as Nails, they don't even use tough as nails anymore. Also, at this point, we've pretty much conquered all of the elements anyway. It's not like removing tough as nails is going to make anything really easier. Plus, the second I take it off, look at this, 60 frames. So there you go. Now, did I cheat a little bit there? Yes. So, to make it up to you all for putting you through all that, let's get right to the best part of this video. This is going to be our reactor room. So, we start to set it out, and we continue to expand it as needed. Remember, it's gonna have to fit a five by five by five. So we're gonna need the extra space. I can already see that this thing is going to be awesome. On day 42, I get started with as much casing as possible. Day 50 is coming and I don't know if I can finish the reactor in nine days, but I wanted to get as much of it done as I possibly can. To do this, I was gonna need a lot more graphite dust. And of course, a lot more tough alloy. Never enough tough alloy. Also, I decided to make some of the casing clear, which is super cheap. You just have to add glass to it, no big issue. And as a reward for just adding a little bit of the glass, we get to see inside of this beast. And what a beast this thing will be. It's already day 43, and I still don't have half of the outside done. I start to go full send, and I get a ton of bronze. And we even make the solid fuel fusion controller. Just like an old nuclear craft, the controller will show you all of the stats of the reactor, including how close we are getting to a meltdown, but let's hope it doesn't get that far. And so, we spend the rest of the day just trying to get even more casing. Then, still making more casing by day 44. But also, we start to get some of our nuclear fuel ready too. Now we have enough enriched uranium to make low enriched uranium or LEU 235. Back on our surface, I'm surprised to see that our massive tree is still standing. 
and we have a ton of pumpkins ready to be picked too. I start to make some pumpkin yogurt, and I got to admit, I'm feeling a lot better than the old laggy days. We then start another mine heading down, because this time we're going to get a lot of iron and a lot of coal, because we need to make that for steel, and we need steel also for tough alloy. Oh honey, I'm home. Back at base, we load up the manufactories, but we make sure that the iron and coal go in first. Next, I start to make an immersive engineering coke coal oven. And this only takes some clay bricks, so it's no real problem here. I start to head into the reactor room and carve out a little hole where we'll place it. After all, this room is already going to have radiation, so what's a little smog going to hurt? So the reason I'm setting this whole thing up is, in combination with the blast furnace, sure, we can make a ton of steel. But also, we're going to need creosote oil eventually. We make up an engineer's hammer, and just before we hit up the coke coal oven, let's see if we can't make the blast furnace. Turns out, we can't make the blast furnace. Still, we slap the coke coal oven and get some coal cooking in it. You should say that five times fast. I take a little break and get myself a little bit more pumpkin spice yogurt, and then head back to the reactor room to see that we are in fact getting a little coke coal and that oil. Isn't it? It's kind of ironic that our nuclear fuel, like nuclear energy, takes so much coal. Uh, hold up, hold up. Great. And look at all, I'm not even like, I'm not even mad about the zombies. It's just, I know these guys are going to be parasite food in like five days. It's just going to be, I hope I'm ready. I have like no, I've set up like no defense either. It's going to be so much worse. I take a minute here and eat a little bit and I check the day. I still have about four nights left. I come back home and see this green blue Aurora over the volcano. Ooh, the volcano in the background. You know, this would, you know, this would be beautiful. It wasn't so terrifying. Back at base and things are looking all good for now. The Coke oven has a good amount of oil and we're going to start to collect it in some buckets. We can combine a bucket of creosote oil with wood to make treated wood which is the core component of everything immersive engineering. We definitely need it. Not as much as we need steel though, but still we need it. I head out at the break of dawn to grab some leaves for the spruce tree, collect them all and replant the trees because we still need to fix up this mega tree. I start to make some more blast bricks, but I need a little more clay. I look it up really quick and I remember that clay is at level 62. So I head out right at that level and start mining some. Now. Here's the part that kind of sucks and basically ruined my day. I waste a ton of time right at level 62 mining all day. The thing is, I had no chance of finding clay here. The volcano has actually moved the entire world up a few blocks. Finally, I managed to find some clay, but it's a full 10 blocks higher than it should have been. And I'm a little bit frustrated the volcano has got me wasting an entire day 47. But I can't complain too much because we officially have our blast furnace. This one uses coke coal to slowly make steel. It's a longer process, but it is actually more coal efficient. More importantly, we can now use the treated wood to make treated wood sticks, which we need to make the handles of our chemical thrower. Yep, that's right. If our time on that Mars colony has taught me anything, is that the parasites get melted if you use this little toy right here. Luckily, it's actually not too complex itself, only needing to be made out of some iron plates and we have the hammer already, so that's pretty easy. Then we make some fluid pipes and some iron mechanical components to make the air tank. And finally, we can combine some silver and gold in the alloy furnace. While that cooks, we make our steel plates so that we can make some steel mechanical components. And finally, we take that electrum out of the alloy furnace and use all that to make a heavy engine block, which should be the last thing we need to make the chemical thrower. As long as there are parasites in our world, this thing will be stuck in our hotbar like glue. Which, now that I think about it, this thing could probably shoot glue. However, I'd much rather it shoot lava instead. It's a good thing we have a magma crucible full of more lava than we could ever need. So let's craft up a portable tank and empty out the crucible with 20 buckets of lava. This way, we can make some room for the pyrotherium dust and put that in the crucible, because this makes the most amazing fuel for the chemical thrower yet. Now I remember that the zombies are mostly coming up through the back, so I set the tank of lava here so that I can quickly refuel. Oh look, a test subject. Let's see how this works on this Basals. Now it doesn't do too much damage in a short burst like this, but it does set the target on fire. And if we really want to melt them down, we can just hold down a steady stream of lava. This will do much more damage right up front, 
and it will still set them on fire and burn them. We get a little bit more yogurt, because I actually don't know if I'll be able to come out here and harvest when the parasites start coming. And speaking of parasites invading, I do a little bit more work on my lava mode. Ouch. Okay, cool. I, th I think that the fire's done more damage to me than this little guy has. I am reminded right here by this little guy that if I set something on fire and it gets to me, it sets me on fire. And now, this should finish the full circle around the base. You you know, like a like a moat. Now, I, I would 100% admit, I'm not fooling myself. This will not hold back the big boys, but it can hold back the bugs and the smaller parasites. They might not be able to get over, at least at the very start. This moat should buy us some more time to make better defenses. After all, we only have one more day and we've completely run out of lava. We need bigger guns. So I start to craft up and melt up a ton of the pyro dust. And even though this is like super expensive, I mean, it takes blaze powder, we can actually afford it because of that centrifuge setup. By day 49, we finally have a full circle all the way around the base. Yes, I know, I've seen Forge Labs' video. The parasites are insane, sure. But in my mind, they need a lot of time to ramp up and actually get powerful. So I should have a few days to figure out what I'm doing and I'll be safe. Well, my mind would very soon be changed. Okay, at least we have a ton of blazing pyrotheria. Now I probably should seal up all the entrances, so let's make some steel doors and add them to the bunker. No more zombies just walking right in as they please. The back door is the biggest room that we need to cover, but I also make sure to get doors on the reactor room mine shafts as well. Then, in the very front, I actually add an extra wall and put in a double door. No idea why I'm using netherrack here, but whatever. <laughs> Guys, please don't get infected, okay? Dude, these chickens, these chickens are going to get infected in like the first minute. Day 51, and unfortunately, I can't be worried about that right now. I'm trying to get this reactor working before the parasites start to really mass up. I head outside, and I gotta say, halfway through the playthrough, this place is looking pretty good. Remember how nice this place looks. It will not look this way much longer. Oh, no way. Jeez, it's been like, it's been like 20 minutes. What is that? Oh my. I don't really want to do this, but here. Okay. Ooh, what is this? Ooh. Ooh. Brothers, these things are so gross. Oh. Okay. I think if I just. Oh no, they're already down here. There are already a ton of them underneath me. Ooh. Ooh. I promise, I promise I won't be this scared the whole time. Maybe. The bugs are already starting to gain steam, and they're infecting the zombies underneath our base. We block up the doors, because every time we go mining from now on, it's going to be a battle. I start to craft up a ton of casing, and we get it all glassy and clear. Now we have about 37, and we can fully cover the top of the reactor. Now we're still going to need a few more casing, but before we seal everything up, let's start making our first fission cells. Remember, we need zircoloi and a few advanced panels to make these cells. We need exactly 12 for this design, which again, remember, we blatantly stole just like we always do. By the way, if you want to see that, I'm going to put a link down in my description to that tutorial video so you can find out step by step how to build this reactor. Or you know, you could just watch me do it. And it looks like I'm going to have to hurry. We really need some power because we've run out of solar energy, which means we have to cook up the beryllium in an old school furnace. Next, with a little more tough alloy, we can make some empty heat sinks, which we definitely need because this is the part of the reactor that keeps it from going boom. We start by making water heat sinks. We need exactly 12 of them. Water heat sinks only need to be next to one active cell, so we're going to put exactly one in between each cell and the wall. But the heat sinks are going to be the most complex part, so before we really dive into that, let's finish up our moderator blocks first. This design has 28 beryllium blocks. So yeah, we're definitely going to need more. Moderator blocks let neutrons move from one cell to another, and they connect them, making them a cluster. 
so this means we have to place them in between every cell. This will make each cell connected to its neighbor. While the beryllium cooks, let's make some iron heat sinks. Iron heat sinks need to be touching an active moderator block, aka the beryllium. And for a moderator block to be active, it has to be directly touching a cell itself. It's not too complex, but this is just the start. It gets worse. In our design, we need 24, but let's just start out with the first 12. They're gonna go next to each of the water sinks. Pretty simple. Okay, now we have a few more beryllium, we can start to connect all of the cells. The top and the bottom cells have all been connected with beryllium. Well, some of the middle cells will actually have some graphite, but I'll show all that a little bit later. For now, we need to farm some coal to get said graphite and try not to die from the parasites. <sighs> okay. Dude, I, I really hate this lava. Like, at least I can kill parasites and still get to all the ores, but now the lava just covers them up. And kill parasites we do. I'm trying really hard to keep their population low, for as long as I can at least. I think that's how they grow stronger. I pop up in the middle of a flooded crater, and I quickly see that my base is it's looking great. After everything that's happened, I gotta say, this tree, it's really growing on me. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. So now, first things first, we're gonna process the coal. You try eating a banana and then having an energy drink, dude. Trust. After giving you guys horrible nutrition advice, we get some of the pulverized coal cooking into graphite and, of course, making some more tough alloy. We start to get some graphite until... Dude, I hate that so much. Like, I know I'm technically safe, but still. Ooh. All right. I continue to routinely kill some more parasites, still trying to keep their numbers low. But, well, starting to get a little scared. Dude, look at him. Dude, look at him move. Look at how... Bro. Dude, there's... these. This is the grossest mod. I swear this mod is... It's just, like, designed to be gross. On every sense. Like, everything about this. Like, they look... Down. I'm sure they smell bad, too. So, I decided to run back to make some more heat sinks. Eight more iron, but these will be placed a little bit later. First, I'd like to place the moderator blocks and get all of those done. In the middle of the reactor, we have a mix of beryllium and those graphite blocks. In total, we need four graphite blocks, and we set them all here. They're placed in the middle of these two beryllium, then directly in the middle of the two middle cells. We just need one last beryllium up there, and we're set. While that beryllium cooks, we get a few more heat sinks. Now we're gonna be working with gold heat sinks, which we'll need 10 of, then lead, which we'll eventually need 12 of, but for right now we only have three. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm telling you that, you guys can obviously count. Dude. And you guys can probably also hear that. Like, I, I like that the, they're a real challenge. Like, they're really hard. They're one of the hardest mobs I've ever played. But at the same time, it's almost like, I'm not even sure if I like this. It's definitely a really good mod. Like, it's a high quality mod. I don't know, dude. Ugh. While I try to figure out whether I like the Parasite mod or hate it, we have four lithium heat sinks, which are really big ones. We can only manage to fit four in this design, but they definitely help. So let's start adding some of them all in. First, we're gonna put gold in the dead center at the bottom. It has to be touching exactly two iron, so this works. Then the lead will be going in between the two iron. They only need to be touching one, so this will work too. Then the lithium has to be in the middle of two lead in a row. So that goes right in the center, above the gold. Was that too fast for you? Well, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, so you'll get a second chance to look at it. Finally, on these far gaps over here on the sides, in between the water and the lead, we're gonna put copper sinks. So guess what we're crafting up right now? We need a total of eight copper, and they're really simple. Four on each side, in between all of the most outer water cells. Copper heat sinks are pretty low tier, but everything adds up. Remember, the lithiums are the big boys, so you definitely need to make sure you have those on row two and row four. And remember, to make the lithium work, you have to have the two lead in a line, and to make the lead work, you have to have iron touching them. So this design all works. We then place the three gold up the middle, all offsetting the lithium. Remember, they just need to touch two iron, and they do. We do the exact same on the other wall. You guys can get a little look at it right here. This is about 80% of the cooling. Now we still definitely need to fill in some lead and some gold and a few iron in the middle, but we've actually gotten pretty far already. Finally, on day 54, 
The only resource we're really struggling with here is lead. Weird, but it always seems to be lead. Until we find more of that, we can put some iron in the middle here, between the beryllium. Then you place this gold on top of the graphite. Remember, gold needs two iron to work, so we set the other iron on the other side. Then, in between those iron going across, we can add a lead. The pattern up there for floor four works the same down here on floor two, and we can add iron and gold. Then finally, we add another iron and the two lead, and finally, one last iron, and I can back my way out. I do have to warn you though, this reactor is not totally made correctly, uh, no spoilers, but I find out the hard way that we did mess up in here. If you wanna see the total heat neutral version, you're gonna have to watch to the very end of the video. Fair warning, I don't want you to have a meltdown. But right now, we're gonna move on to the biggest difference that was added in an overhaul. You cannot just turn a reactor on and off at the controller anymore. Nope, you need neutron primers. And to make those, we're gonna have to make a decay hastener. Because of that, we're gonna have to take a quick trip to the nether and get just a little glowstone. See right here, every time I, every time I come out of the nether, I get, I have to go through this hallway and it has this right here. Yup. And this is the, dude, this is just level one. These are like the level one mobs and the buglings too. I keep, I want to kill them. Like I want to kill them to make sure, oh, 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 no, 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 oh, oh my God. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. I'm stuck. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm stuck. <sighs> Bro, they just keep coming. Oh, my God. Dude, this is this is going to get so much worse, too. This is just the beginning. And it gets... <sighs> so, after deeply considering my life choices right there, we can craft up a decay hastener. And we can just throw it in the back here. It's not too important, after all. Now we just need to wait for it to charge up. And it is a thirsty boy. But we might as well add our uranium... 238 and wait for the decay generator to finally do its thing but this is a little suspicious like it shouldn't be taking this long to charge i'm getting a little worried here i make a little extra flux ducts and then i head up to the surface just to check to make sure everything is working i'm not 100 percent sure what's happening but i think the tree might be choking them so i'm gonna try to move them and while i'm moving them and have them all in my inventory i decide to upgrade the basic ones to advanced panels then i decide to craft up even more by the time I'm finally done, it is nighttime, and I'm a little mad about that, but it's okay because this will be better in the long run. Then when we're finished, I put the panels out from underneath the tree. Yes, I know. This means that they'll now get the full power we could ask for, but at the same time, they are going to be in danger and exposed out here from either parasites or zombies or lava boulders. But that's not even our first problem right now. We can't even connect them. We need more flux ducts. And unfortunately for flux ducts, we need lead, and we're running critically low here. We've used up our last bit of lead, but we do manage to connect the panels, and by tomorrow, we should have enough power to get the neutron primers. Or so I thought. Day 56, and we are still struggling. I really need this reactor. We managed to get our very last beryllium, and I closed the whole reactor up. Looking around it here, it does look pretty good. We've made some good progress. I think we've pretty much, I think we did it. I think we've made our first nuclear craft overhaul reactor. I know it's not totally done, but for now, I need to get some vents ready to get coolant in, or else we're gonna mess up very, very soon. Okay. Okay, they're literally at my front door, great. Okay. Yeah, cool. This is this is gonna go great. This is gonna end so great. This is, this is gonna end really well, you guys. They're at my front door. So, like I've been saying, to make this last overhaul component, we have to go mining. The lead situation has just gotten too dire. Oh, and speaking of a dire situation, Oh, oh man. Oh, dude. Oh, I think it's stuck. Oh my god. Bro, I... That scared me. These things are... These things are super dangerous. I'm actually really lucky it's stuck. That scared me so much. I'm not even gonna try... I'm not even gonna try to... Pretend like I would... Dude. I'm so glad this thing is stuck. Oh. Please, let's see if it doesn't hurt me. Come on. There we go. Alright. Yeah. Bro, that, that, that's gonna be a nightmare later. I promise you. But yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh no, no, no. Ooh, ooh. Dude, dude, every time, every time. They're so they're silent every dude. And I'm out of I'm out of juice now too. Bro, this. And done, he sure was. And I start heading home right away. I finally come up 
in the snowy plains, but my mountain biome isn't too far away. But before I get there, I see this. This place looks really bad. This, this is... Oh, that's an earthquake. Whoa, that's an earthquake all the way through. Wow. Dude, wow, this is only like a little ways away from me. Yeah, man. If that, if that earthquake had hit us, dude, that would have been... Yikes. And it was only like a valley away too. That's scary. Also, if the if an earthquake hits our reactor, it could leak radiation like pretty bad. Like that could really be bad for us. Hmm, what a scientific conclusion, Captain. So of course, my solution is to start eating more carbs. Yum. I see a recipe I've never made called banana bread, and I start to buy a walnut tree so that we can make it. I don't think I've ever had a walnut tree. It's, just, it's crazy, I've played this mod pack for like years and there's still stuff I haven't done. Even the old version of like Harvestcraft has so much great stuff, I love it. It's, uh, dude, I love it. We bone meal a few walnuts and I come back down just to test out the new recipe. Sure enough, we have everything we could need and this little treat will cover dairy, fruit, grain, and protein. Those are the pretty hard ones to get covered. Combine that with green tea for veggies and we've got a whole diet done. Thank you, Betsy. That, you know what? I decided right there that our loyal Betsy does deserve a friend. Even though I have nothing to gain from breeding cows, I still decide to buy one because I want Betsy to have Bill the Bull as a friend. I also grab some peanuts. Just in case we lose those trees outside, I still want to have a rich protein source. I set a few up here, but I am going to harvest these and move them down into the bunker where they're safe. Then we grab all the pulverized coal, and I start to make a ton of graphite. Next, we're going to have to craft up some fuel ports, another new addition from Overhaul. It's a brand new block that lets fuel enter and exit the reactor. That's right, we can't just drop a pellet of uranium into the controller and pull it out when it's depleted. Ooh, uh, you know what, mm, let me, maybe just close, maybe just, maybe just close this, yeah, okay. And after that mini heart attack, we start to get some zircon alloy cooking. It's the exact same alloy that we used to make the reactor cells, so it's no big deal. What is a big deal is a finished fuel port. We're going to add these to the right side of the reactor. One of them for the fuel to go in, and another one here for the fuel to come out. We add some chests, but I don't put them directly on the ports because I actually want to watch the uranium go in through the item duct. Item ducts are clear tubes. They kind of act like hoppers, and they can move items. It's basically like a super hopper that you can use to run up and down and all over the place. Then we craft up some servos, which help direct items through the item ducts. This will keep everything flowing in the right direction, AKA out of this chest into the reactor, then out of the reactor and up into this chest. I think it's finally been long enough. We should be able to make those neutron primers. And the decay hastener has made some radium dust, but I didn't know it was gonna be this spicy. Oh, 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 that's, Ooh, no, no, no. Wow, that's actually like real rads right there. I decide I should probably wait a little bit before I start playing with some nuclear fire. I'm gonna get a little protection first. Meanwhile, let's see if we can't turn these taters into some flour. Then we get a bunch of walnuts, and I decide to make a decent amount of nanner bread. Combine this with tea, and we have everything we need to head out and get as many supplies as we can to get some radiation protection. On the start of day 60, I head out because I decide I want to head back to those planes. So I go down and I start mining, like, like a lot. I actually think I really like the uh, overhaul. I mean, I know that it's been like 60, I feel bad, it's been 60 days and I don't have a reactor yet, but um, I really like that you have to make panels. I think that's better than the decay generator and I don't know, I'm digging it from so far. I think if I think I might try to make a thorium reactor, I think that would be cool. Like I think that I could do it a lot faster next time I play. Well, when I'm not being killed by the cold or parasites. But before I go thinking about my next video, let's try to survive this one. As soon as we get some more lead processed, we can get some radiation shielding going. This also takes sugarcane in a manufactory, which is why we've been growing it this whole time. See, heavy shields takes two medium shields, which takes two light shields, which takes a lot of lead. So after we get a boatload of it, is that a pun because I'm a captain? Anyway, of light shields, we can get some medium shields. That just takes a little bit of ferroboron. Easy, we've been making that for the last 50 days. For heavy shields, we're gonna need hard carbon. So yet again, a diamond will be sacrificed to the nuclear craft gods, praise Tom. 
then some bioplastic, and that's where the sugar cane comes in. Now we can finally make two medium shields. And since we already have a ton of beryllium, all we need to make is DU panels. Now this is kind of tough. They need enriched uranium and sulfur. Luckily, even though both of those are pretty rare, we have enough of them to make three DU panels. And soon, we have the best defense against growing a third arm, heavy radiation shields. So with those, we could start to make a hazmat suit. I've actually wanted to make this every nuclear craft playthrough, so we're finally gonna do it. Unfortunately, I'm getting a little impatient here. I don't wanna wait any longer to make those neutron primers. And yes, I know that I don't technically have any radiation protection. I'm just gonna have to be careful. Famous last words. This is confusing, but I'll try to explain. The primers need to be aimed at a fission cell and offsetting. So in this bottom right, then in the middle left, then at the top right once again. You don't need to put a primer on every cell because if a cell is hit with neutrons, it will then fire neutrons down the moderator blocks to the next cell in line. So in the back, we have to do the same thing, only this time reversed. And you'll see that in the end. For now, we're out of radium dust, so that'll have to wait. While that cooks, we're gonna add the vents. Again, remember, vents let in and out water to cool the reactor. I'm gonna put the output directly in the back here, in the middle. Next, we're gonna craft up an infuser to add oxygen to our uranium pellets to boost their power. To get that oxygen, we're gonna need an electrolyzer, which is easy to make, but keeping it powered, that's a different story. This one is definitely another thirsty boy. Speaking of thirsty, we add a water source to it so that we can get hydrogen and oxygen out of it. And continuing with making water sources, we add one to the vent in the front of the reactor to pump water into the reactor, cooling it. I had a quick little fluid duct here, and sure enough, I can see right away it's working. However, this is just a basic water source, and I'm not really sure how much water this thing is gonna use. Now, Tom used a dense infinity water source, AKA a tier three water source. So I decided that I should at least make a tier two water source. Okay, now back to that hazmat suit. I made a second heavy shield, and now we only need one more. Also, we have a little bit of oxygen, which we can move with a bucket. That doesn't make any sense holding oxygen in a bucket, but hey, it's a little mercy and I'll take it. Because soon we have our LEU-235 oxide pellets. Before we handle them, let's get some sugarcane and finally get that hazmat suit done. Hazmats also take some leather, and there's no way I'm gonna kill Betsy. Luckily, the manufacturer has us covered here. It can press rotten flesh into leather instead. Now, we just need that last heavy shield. We make the last mid shield, and finally, we can make our last heavy shield. And boom, proper hazmat suit. Watch these rats drop. Ooh, there we go. That's what's up. Now we can safely handle that radium dust and finally make those last primers. Remember, these have to be offset. So while the bottom one's on the left, the middle one goes on the right and the top one goes back on the left. These offset the ones in the front. Does any of this make sense? Next, we're gonna have to add a lever to each one of them to turn them on. Just to be extra safe, I do decide to add another vent in the front with another water source just be extra careful here. And I know that soon we're gonna have a ton of power coming. So I don't feel too bad about putting one or two speed upgrades for the electrolyzer, even if it does tax our power supply a little bit. Speed upgrades double the speed, but they quadratically increase the consumption of energy, which is a little bit more than I had originally thought. If you really start to stack them, they can quickly get out of control, but just one should be okay. And we could even try to equalize this by making a few energy upgrades. But each energy upgrade only halves the power consumption in a linear line, so eventually you won't be able to make up for all the speed upgrade consumption. But if we want to keep making upgrades, we're going to need a lot more quartz. Here we go. I hate this part so much. Yep. Yep. What is that? Dude, it's like a... It's like a giant spider? Oh, it's got a human head. No. Okay, it's got a rupture. And it's just got a big, thick, juicy butt. You know what? I'm going to deal with that later. I'm going to deal with it. I'm out. Yep. Day 66, and we have six LEU pellets. But we need one for each cell, so that's a total of 12. That means we're going to have to keep on moving and getting more oxygen. But with all this time spent building a reactor, I should take a minute and just take in this entire valley around me. Honestly, most of the parasites are still underground. I really want to build up here, 
and now I'm thinking it would probably even be safer to do so. So I start to plant some more walnut trees, and they should be ready by the time I move up here. Uh, but then... Okay, so so this whole time they've always they've been level one. This whole time they've just... Dude, back in the bunker. I keep moving more oxygen as I'm trying to get those 12 pellets ready. I'm hoping I can get this reactor started before day 75 and the next event. Also, since I used up all my walnuts to make trees, I do have to resort to some peanuts and use my bananas to make a peanut butter banana sandwich. I think that would be good, but hmm. I will say that the nutrition is looking pretty good and I'm happy to have 260% health. So at least I'm doing something right. Oh, what was that? Where'd it go? Uh, yeah, not so happy about that though. Finally, we have 14 pellets, and now we can run the reactor. And in my excitement, I foolishly throw some of the pellets in. Now with the primers turned off, the reactor isn't gonna start up, and that's not the problem. The problem is, well, uh, no spoilers, you'll see. But right now, I'm not turning this reactor on anyway. We still have a ton of more work to do. Because now, we need to talk about the biggest change in nuclear craft overhaul. Fission reactors now need a turbine to work. Yeah, that means we're gonna have to make a whole separate multi-block machine. And all of that starts with making manganese. And that all starts by cooking up some rhodochrosite. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. We can get some magnesium oxide. Then we have to recook it again. Jeez, and they oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh my god, no, 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 no. They can come through the walls. They, oh, no, 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 I like this. Dude, 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 dude. Oh, they can come through the walls. It's, it's stuck though. Oh my god, it's, it's like the long arm. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, upgraded long arm. It's the adapted long arm. Oh my gosh. Dude, they can come through. This, this is so bad. They can come through walls now. This is bad. They can dig up from underneath me. They can literally come from above or underneath me now. I mean, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna block everything up now, but I don't know, what am I gonna do? Well, would you look at that? I guess the parasites can break blocks now, huh? Seriously though, I can't stress enough, this is a big issue. I'm trying to stay focused on recooking the manganese and get to dust, but I cannot stress how much this changes everything for the playthrough. Right now, we're a little over two thirds of the way being done, but now everything has changed. I combined some graphite with the manganese to get carbon manganese blend, and this is for the turbine casing. But now I'm thinking about it. Where am I gonna place this where it'll be safe? Is the reactor gonna be safe? For now, I just have to get some iron and combine it with the blend in the alloy furnace. I get some high strength, low alloy steel, and start to make some of the casing for the turbine. And I am going to be making pretty much the same turbine that Tom did with some small changes. But at this point, I can't get too creative and experiment because I need to just survive and go with what I know works. So I head up top and I start to level out a pretty big area where I can set down this massive turbine. Because at the time, I was thinking that the parasites were pretty much coming from down below me. So a turbine up here would be safer. Because after all, we're still eventually going to have to move up here. I start to lay out the design, which is a 3x3x4 three by three by long. And then I hear something. <laughs> sure enough, this little cow comes running out of the wilds, but a low level parasite like this still can't get past the lava. So maybe this is gonna work after all. Ew. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, okay, okay, good. I'm sure those won't spread everywhere. I head back down and I try to get some more materials to make the turbine. And then when I head back up. <gasps> ooh, ooh. Where is it? Yeah, I forgot. These guys can jump. So that night, because this is a little too close to the lava, I need to move the turbine over a little bit. It's not really too much of a problem. I just need it to be a little further from the edge for right now. I quickly move it a bit, and I start to add even more casing. I get some clear casing, because you guys know how I do. And I get one whole side of the turbine done in under a day. Then by day 69, quiet, no we get the controller. Now this works just like the old style controller on the reactors. You can use a lever and turn this one on and off. No critical reaction needed. And so the rest of today is spent building up the casing for the turbine. 
And even though we have to use a ton of iron, pretty soon we get enough finished to get the top and the other side of the turbine all finished. Now we just need to get the bottom finished and the ends, but those are gonna be a little bit special. In the middle, we are gonna have a rotor shaft and we'll have to add blades to it. First, you have to set up some rotor bearings. Then you can run a shaft in between each bearing. So we head up top, add one bearing with the shaft running right down the middle. Then finally, we get the other bearing on the other side too. For the blades, we're just gonna be making some simple steel. Day 70, and we're almost totally done. Now we just need to set up all the blades on each side of the middle rotor. I think it's a total of 16 and yes, I know I only have 12. So we are gonna have to go back down and get a few more. Sadly though, we can't yet. We're a little low on steel, so we are gonna have to go mining one more time. But hey, if it wasn't for that, I would've got this turbine done in two days, but oh well, rip my speed run. So we have all these all these crazy parasites and all these nuclear machines. Somehow I'm still a dirty boy digging coal. Ooh, ooh. Oh man, the way they come out of the. Ooh! God! Twice, twice! And after getting double scared from just one mob, we get home and we start to unload all the mats. And soon, we're getting some more steel. We do have to use it right away to make some tough alloy and, uh,. Okay, maybe I was lying to myself when I said I could finish this turbine in two days after all. But soon, we do have the steel and the tough alloy, and we can make a fluid inlet. This is where the fluid go goes in. Duh. Next, we can make a fluid outlet. And can you guess what this is for? We actually set the outlet facing towards the tree, with the inlet facing away. Because the reactor is actually pretty much straight below the inlet here. We craft up those four last turbine blades, but more importantly, now we're gonna get our dynamo coils. These blocks are actually what makes the electricity in the entire reactor setup. For our design, we're gonna use four magnesium, six beryllium, and another four copper. I'll just start off with one side at a time. The magnesium coil has to be touching one of the bearings. Even though it's the weakest coil of all, it has to be the start of any setup. So step one, we're gonna put one in the middle, at the very bottom, and at the very top. Oh, it's just a cow. Uh, not this time. Step two is, well, get jump scared by this spooky moo moo. Nope, not this time. Now back to the turbine. The beryllium coil needs to be touching a magnesium coil, so those go next to each other. Finally, copper, which is a pretty decent coil, needs to be touching a beryllium, so those will go in last. Ooh, oh. Dude, they, they went from two to three fast. That's not good. So as upsetting as that is, we have to push forward and continue on. This is pretty easy. We're gonna do the exact same setup on the inlet side of the turbine too. Magnesium at the poles, beryllium's in the corners with copper on the sides. There's that one little gap up in the corner there and we can just fill that with another beryllium. Unfortunately, that's the best we can do for right now. As soon as we finish up that last side, the turbine comes to life. And when it looks like this, you know it's all come together correctly, and it works. And just as we finish the last part of our reactor setup, we've almost finished our nutrition too. The parasites might be getting stronger, but we're getting pretty strong too. Of course, we're still gonna have to connect everything, starting with the reactor being connected to the turbine. Hello there. We start to dig down towards the reactor room. We come down pretty close to the reactor, and we'll be able to connect all this and make it work. What? Uh, what is that thing, dude? The lava, the lava's not keeping any of this out, man. It's a good thing I have this gun. The pyrothium dust is so effective against these parasites, but we are gonna have to use a lot of it to make a lot of hardened glass right now. Then we combine it with the Envar, uh, but... Did, did that? I thought I just heard blocks breaking. <gasps> no, 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 I, no, 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 no. Oh my God, he's coming in again. No, 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 okay, 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 I did hear, I did hear blocks breaking. Oh man, again, twice, this is like only, man, this might be the rest of the playthrough. Whew, whew, I think that was one of the big, like, runners, it's almost like a big bull. Uh, they're super fast. They like run faster than you out in the open, but If we were to find that out in the open, we'd be done. Not that it's any better in the mines. 
Ew. Oh, they're so gross. Dude, ew. I guess just keep building the wall and just always have my gun loaded. That's it. So after that minor freak out, we add as many blocks as we can and try to stop that from ever happening again. But really, the more I think about it, I have no good answer for that kind of attack. The best idea I can really come up with right now is to just kill the parasites as they spawn. For now, I finally get back to making that Ingvar. We craft that up with the hardened glass and we connect the reactor all the way up to the turbine. I'm still thinking that if I can live up top, maybe the parasites will spawn up there and I'll be able to fight them from a distance, you know, before they drill directly into my base. Problem is, once the steam goes into the turbine, it doesn't simply vent out into the air. We need to deal with the exhaust steam, or the turbine will shut down, and eventually, we'll have a meltdown. So, we go into an industrial craft machine called a steel tank. They're pretty simple, they just need a little tin, and a little steel, and a little glass, I think. Now, the reason I'm trying so hard to store up all the steam is that we can use it in an immersive engineering turbine to make even more power, just like we did in that 200 days video. Now, to effectively move around all of this power that we made at once, we're going to need to upgrade our flux ducts into hardened flux ducts. Unfortunately, these are a little more expensive and require a rare alloy, Invar. However, almost like I planned it, we've already been making a ton of that. Next, to store up all this power, we're going to need to really ramp up our battery situation. Two basic piles don't even have a hope of holding all the power of a nuclear reactor. We add our first advanced pile to the power line. We're going to have to go out one more time, do a little bit of mining to get all of the ores to finish those last piles. Is that... What was that thing? Oh, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, it's slow. No, it's fast, no, it's fast, no, it's fast. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. No! Oh. oh, I did. I got it. So, obviously, we run as far from that as we can. In fact, we keep on running until we find this glacier biome. I head down, and I start doing some mining. And if you guys didn't notice that it was day 74 and tomorrow will be a big event, guess what? Neither did I. So what happened next was, well, a little bit of a surprise. Dude, this world is so beat up. It's like completely changed. I think it's all the lava boulders. Except my base. No way. No way. No. Are you kidding me? Oh. Dude. Wow. No. It's. Dude, it's. There's, that's wasteland. It's destroying everything. It's just. It's going to hit my base. It, dude, if it hits my base, I'm... What is ha <gasps> What is happening? No, no way. What? Oh my god, my tree. Oh my god, my tree. Whoa. Oh my god, it's it's going all the way up the mountainside. Dude, look at that. It's It has stripped the entire valley. In an attempt to wipe out the parasite threat, a nuke was launched directly at our base. It landed only a couple hundred blocks away, way too close. The entire landscape has become a nuclear wasteland, and the farmland has been turned into wasteland earth. Unfarmable and dangerous. Oh my god, oh my god, that's so good to see. Wow. But the bunker holds. Oh, but even even if I even if I see my bunker, I can still hear the parasites. No, they're dying of the radiation. Yep, yep, they're all gonna die. Oh no! Oh, my rad my radiation. Oh my god, my rad bars. Oh my gosh, thirteen. I can see it filling up now. No, no, no. What was that? Oh my god. Oh my god. No, wait, no, 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 okay. 
I think. I think we got it right there. Holy crap. Uh, are you serious? Are you I'm out, dude, I'm out of here. And there's and there's ghouls too. There's feral ghouls too. Dude. Oh dude. There's I'm out of here. I'm I, Oh my god, what in the Dude, oh my what do we even do? That's the entire outside is legit a wasteland. I can't go out there. Well, that was um interesting. Turns out the parasites are coming from above much stronger now than they ever have been coming from below us. Ooh. Ooh. It's still right there. Oh. oh my god, oh my god. Oh, it's working! Ah. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh my god, it's breaking in. It's breaking in from above. What is that? Now what is... Okay. Alright. Alright. I don't even know what to do right here, because... They're like tentacles? Dude. I'm afraid they're gonna spread. I'm afraid the tentacles are gonna spread, so I have to kill them right now. Ew. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my god. 108 rads, dude! What is happening? What is happening? Oh, um, no, 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 no. I, I can't let these- No, 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 oh my god. Oh my god, it just- it wiped my health bar. I don't- I don't want to use this, but I might have to. Yep. Dude, it wiped out my health bar. What do I even do? Okay. Okay. If it's- Dude, if the feral ghouls melt, give me radiation. And then, and then this, and then this. Okay, cool. Well, also I'm stupid, so that's great. That's cool. And it's like every time I come out at night. Yep. 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 Okay. I'm done. I'm done. I. I'm done. I quickly try to make a wall and seal myself underground, but the danger is far from over. This entire time I've been fighting, the radiation levels have been skyrocketing. I need to make Rataway right, right now. Faster than I've ever had to make it in the past. Okay, so we still we still have the cows, and have, oh, the doors are sealed. So we... Dude, I can't focus. I can't focus. I really was panicking. I couldn't focus on anything. All the while, the radiation levels keep on climbing. Uh, we need more tough ally. That's okay. Good. Easy. Just... Okay, just make the next thing. Now the next thing. Okay, 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 okay. Easy, easy. Oh. Okay, not. Nope, 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 okay. Easy. There. Okay. Easy, just stay calm. And we got this. We got this super easy. We just need a melter. Melter's easy. Servo. A tough ally. Everything's okay. Okay. Yep. And the chassis. Okay. It's okay, though. Okay. Easy. Come on. We got this. Boom. Be easy. Easy. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, yep. Okay. 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 There. Soon we had a melter, but I turned sugarcane into sugar, which is a big mistake. That needs to be used for bioplastic. Right away, I realized what I've done. Now, I need another way to get sugar. And Harvestcraft might just save us. It gives us agave, which will work. Go, okay, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Okay, go, 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 and we can turn the agave into sugar and throw that in the melter instead. But we're still running low on time. We still have all of these enemies around us to fight, and soon we'll be getting weakness from the radiation poisoning. I pull myself together and get a fluid enricher. Now we only need one more machine. But first, I have to make a little space up here so I can set down the enricher. This machine needs ethanol and glowing mushrooms, which unfortunately, we don't have any mushrooms. Finally, the only thing we can do now is go to the nether. Okay, we just got... We have to make a run for it. This is gonna be... Oof. Oh, what? D 
dude, what is that? Ew, I think it, I think it might be like a beacon or like a spawner. Dude, no, I'm kill that, that's gotta die. Okay. Yep, okay, let's get out of here. Don't know what that was, don't care. I pop out down here and I start to collect as many mushrooms as I can. Also, I just kind of take a minute to take a breath here for once. You know, I was just thinking the um, the nether's kind of nice. It's like calm and I can actually like breathe. Oh, oh, it's one of those meat blobs. Dude, I got to kill this before. It... I think these things, I think these things upgrade into bigger. You know, no, I'm just going to build my way out. I, I'm not staking down here. I don't want to find out. Back at base, I think it's going well because now we actually have a good amount of glowing mushrooms. But now our rads have halfway filled up and we definitely have weakness. If the parasites attack, I'm basically defenseless. I keep on trying to push forward and keep focused with all the chaos going on around me. I get our first molten sugar into the chemical reactor and then I add water so that it will start to make the ethanol. Finally, we mix that with the glowing mushrooms in the enricher. I keep on trying to stay focused, moving everything along from machine to machine, keeping the process going and getting the rads as soon as we can. We still need one last machine, the infuser. Finally, we do actually get the Radaway fluid, but this is a little bit of a bait here because we're not going to be able to just use it like this. We need that infuser to put the Radaway into an IV bag. I'm close, but all I can do right now is wait. And I get a little bit nervous here. But then, finally, almost. Okay, yes, yes. Dude, th that right there is the best part of nuclear craft. I can feel it's like drinking ice water, bro. I can feel that. Pure relief. I spend the rest of day 77 making more Radaway so that we don't end up in this situation ever again. And on day 78, to make our Radaway supply last a little bit longer, we're going to make even more radiation protection. I guess the hazmat chest piece just wasn't enough. Hazmat leggings take two heavy shields, one for each cheek. I collect everything we need pretty quickly and we get our first shield. Then we get the second one right away. And then I realize something here. We're getting leather here that we had to make from flesh. Then we're getting string, which we had to also make from cotton. We have yellow flowers that we had to bone meal, and finally a piece of bioplastic, meaning that every single part of these Frankenstein pants were from different mods. We had to use all of these combined together to make this dead frozen valley actually usable. 15 millirads to 10, much better. Now I will not be making hazmat boots because there's no way I'm getting rid of these ones that have no fall damage. So instead, let's work on getting our head protected. Also, maybe if I'm wearing a hazmat suit breathing mask, we don't have to listen to me getting jump scared so much. Sadly though, we won't be able to get that just yet because we run out of sulfur. One of the ways we can get it is by running granite through the rock crusher again, but that's gonna take a while. So I have another idea and I don't have that much time. I'm starting to redline here again. I've already gotten up to mining fatigue. Dude, when do I get to start making nukes, bro? Always the nuked, never the nuker. So finally we get one sulfur. We're gonna need a quicker answer. And I see that the pulverizer can make some with netherrack. So we put netherrack in the pulverizer and we wait. We still need one more DU panel. I'm trying to save some Radaway. If I'm using Radaway right now with very little protection, it kind of goes to waste. Although I might not have a choice very soon. We get some sulfur from the machines, but we still need one more. Finally, Finally, we get it. We can make our second heavy shielding. And with that, a little more bioplastic, we now have a full fun time wasteland outfit. I've wanted to make hazmat suits in a 100 day playthrough for like ever. So this does feel like a pretty big accomplishment. The only real drawback here is that even though I'm safer from radiation, I have much less protection from the parasites. So we're definitely gonna have to rely on our machines and our technology to protect us way more than fighting face to face. I find out one last little trick. My boots can actually be upgraded to get a little bit more protection. I decide to spend the rest of day 78 getting one more heavy shield. Because of all the sulfur grinding, it did in fact take all night, but finally we get that heavy shield and I can set it in my boots and now we have a full kit of full radiation protection. With this, our Radaway should last much, much longer. But of course, we're still going to have to focus on getting protection from parasites to make up for the lack of armor. So. Here we go. Dude, this, I hate this hallway right here. This is the worst part. <laughs> to 
To do this, we're going to have to get a lot more magma blocks so we can make a ton more Blazing Pyro Theorem. You know this hallway? It, it reminds me of like when you go to the bathroom at night and you turn off the light and you have to just run to your bed like, woo. <laughs> Only five days after that nuclear strike, and I was already feeling much better for a bit. Dude. No. It's every time every time I'm feeling good. That's when it happens. Every time. This is too much, dude. Now, we really should fill this tank with blazing pyro and still keep one with lava too, because we're gonna need all the help we can get at this point. Now we do just the smartest thing we could ever do, and we go outside. Okay, here we go. I haven't heard anything in a while, so... And it's daytime too. So maybe... It's already better, it already looks better, okay? Dude, look at this place. Full on waste. Yo, uh, hey, I said I wanted to, uh, I wanted to melt it. I didn't want to be frozen anymore. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. Dude, I hate these things so much. They, they jump your radiation so high. Ooh. No, I do not like those. Uh, and it's, it's becoming nighttime. I hate these things so much. These my these and parasites, dude, are the worst. I can't see anything. I but I was fighting for so long here, it already started to turn to night. No, I'm done with this. I'm trying. I tried. I tried. I'm done with this. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, I tried to. At night, it's. I can't do it. I can't stay out there at night. It's over. I legit feel bad. Because, like, here we're doing another, like, nuclear craft video from a bunker, but I'm, I, I swear I didn't try to do this. I have no choice. I'm stuck down here. On day 80, I take a little day to go underground and pump out more mushrooms so I can make more glowing mushrooms. And that's good. We do run out of glowing dust, but still, still good. What's not good is that sound right there. Whoa. Oh, they're taking damage. That's the parasites taking damage. Yeah, I think they died. They died in the lava. No, no, not really, Captain. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, they broke in. Dude, they broke the top of the bunker. They broke in. They... I don't know how, but they, they broke in and... Get out of the way. Mm. Okay, okay. I'm legit stuck. The entire bunker is filling with lava. I'm legit stuck. Okay, how am I legit trapped in my own base? I'm like stuck in my own base. So yes, that's right. Somehow lava has found its way into my base and it's trapped me back in my reactor room. I have to dig my way through my own bunker and now I have to try to fix half the base. And I go out to see that one of the walls of the lava moat has been broken and is starting to pour lava down into the solar panel hole and down into my base. Now I try the best I can to plug the hole, but more importantly, I make a new wall and try to fix the moat. But then I turn and I get a good look at our power source. No, the turbine, they broke the turbine. Oh my God. And they broke the, and they broke the cable to the solar panels. Not only is our bunker officially dead and cut off from the solar panels, but now the new turbine has been trashed. Yeah, I, dude, I'm sorry. I tried, guys. I tried really hard, but I can't do this. I gotta go underground or I'll never get it work. If I don't go underground, I'll never get the reactor working. Like, that's just what it is. So now, it's obvious to me. We just have to salvage every part that we can and move everything that's left. I take a little time here to think about what I'm gonna do next. I clean up all the blocks that I placed in a panic. Now, I decide I'm gonna have to expand the reactor room so I can fit the turbine far away from those bugs. So now, I set all the turbine scrap aside and I start digging. By the end of the day, we have a pretty good start on a big open area. But after hearing even more parasites, I decide to use the granite that we dug out of the reactor room and reinforce the roof as best I can. Then, we make a huge thick wall here in the front for a little more protection. By day 81, I'm feeling safe enough that my heart rate has finally, finally dropped from day 75. Now I'm going to take out all of the hardened fluid pipes from the roof and start to lay out the, the turbine. And as I start building, 
Unfortunately, I see that we have most of the materials to make the turbine. We only lost a couple of key blocks. So fortunately, with all of that, we managed to get both clear casing walls done pretty quickly on the sides. We placed the inlet and the outlet, only this time we actually flipped the two sides around. Then we set down our first coil, but it's just so we can put the bearing thing up here and another bearing over here, and then we can run the shaft right down the middle. And it's going pretty well, right? Dude, they're so scary out there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Oh my God, he's, he's inside. He's right here. Dude, he was, they dropped right as. No, 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 no. There's another one. There's another one up there. Oh my God, they're coming right in. They're going right. No, no. Are you serious? Are you serious? Dude, they're going, they're dropping right in. And now, yep. And now these guys can just jump in. Dude, this is, this is bad. I have to just hide. This is so bad. Look at my health. Oh my god. For a second here, I'm worried that the parasite is still up there, breaking more and more blocks. I try to figure out how I can repel and repair, but with all these ghouls attacking, I know I can't. I'm forced to hide in the hallway in the back of the bunker with a lava tank. And well, eat and pray. Oh no, not again. Not again, dude. Bro, there's like... Just die, just... That's, those, are, those are legit like boss level parasites. And there's been like four of them today. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. There's two more, there's two more, there's two more. <laughs> Bro, I thought he was gonna I thought he was gonna kill me right there. Another one full health drops in, and I can see even more above him. I have to hide and heal one more time. Now I just rush out and try to repair as much as I can as fast as I can. I don't know why, but at this moment they seem to have pulled back and they gave me a chance. I just build as much as I can as fast as I can. Dude, all this like cobblestone like random it's so ugly. This is, this is the ugliest base I've ever built, but what, what am I going to do? All right, it's like three thick now, good. Now inside, I'm feeling better, but, but the last time I was feeling better, I wasn't much safer. I had another layer of andesite, just in case. Ugh, what an ugly little base. Once again, we keep on cranking out a ton of blazing pyrotherium, and we head down to the nether again, which somehow is the safest spot in the world. It's weird. The nether is like, it's like a summer camp, it's like the safest spot. So we get some more glowing dust for the mushrooms and we get some more bone meal to actually grow the mushrooms and grow the beets too. Back in the overworld, we get some more glowing mushrooms and soon we have some more rat away coming. The ghouls really run up my radiation and drain my supply. Also, we had to craft up another infuser because in all the chaos, I guess we lost one of them. The parasites really run down my, oh boy, everything. On day 83, I poke my head out, and I see one of them way out there in the distance, but I don't think he sees me. Yet. I hurry, because now I'm trying to add my next idea. The parasites break through the blocks, but if they're killed by lava first, we might be able to hold out a little bit longer. I start to expand the lava moat, and soon start making a lava shield. Now, we have a decent defense, but also we have one big problem. All of that power that we were saving up from the solar arrays has finally run dry. Some machines are completely seizing up and shutting down. No more time to mess around here. The lava defense has to wait. We need to run this reactor right now. So I start to craft up the replacement pieces for the turbine, but this means we have to head out one more time to do some mining. And I poke my head out and we do just a little bit of mining. We can't be gone for that long. I can still hear them outside. I think they're taking damage and I'm hoping that the lava is working. I start to make our last little bits of casing. Soon, we can finish up the bottom here, then look up and finish the top as well. Now, we can move on to making the blades for the rotor, and we're almost set. We collect what coils we have and craft up whatever we've lost. So we make the exact same design from before. Now, finally, everything is looking correct. We can connect the reactor and the turbine with the hardened fluid ducts. 
Last but not least, we add the controller and complete the turbine. Now I make some extra rat away, you know, you know just, just in case. Then we get the last piece of the setup done. Advanced piles might actually work okay with this reactor, but I'd really like to make some DU piles. But before we can do that... <gasps> oh, I, heard, I heard blocks break. Oh, a lava means he's only, it's only one block above us. I have, to st I have to fight this. If he breaks through, I'm screwed. I have to fight this. I'm, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, come on, just die, come on. Come on, no, 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 We're on day 84 and we're at two hearts. That's what's happening right now, like. So yeah, obviously that was a bad idea. We're on day 84 and we got down to less than two hearts in that crazy melee. They hit so hard, and my armor is for radiation, not for parasites. Finally, this might not be smart, but poke my head out for one last attempt. He was low enough, so I can get him. Now, I want to get back to focusing on the piles, but we have absolutely no more power, and time is running out, so we're forced to move forward with only basic piles and one advanced pile. I'll admit, this might waste a good amount of power, but we don't have a choice. We have to get started with what we have. We're completely out of energy at this point. I slap the pile directly onto the coils. Now, we sit here and we pray that the parasites don't break in. I know the truth with parasites is I'm going to have to go out there and fight them face to face at one point, or they're eventually just going to break in here and bring the fight to us. And sure enough, I can see them floating high in the sky, but still I'm going to rush and try to repair. Wait, what? Oh, this, this wasn't here before. I'm trying to use gravel here. I'm hoping that it can sink down below the lava, but at this point, I need to fix this huge hole right here first. Then I start to go to the lava and try to blindly drop gravel in until. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, bro, just die. No, 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 you don't. Uh, -uh. I think I got him. No, oh, okay, okay. Yep, easy. Fighting outside like this is super dangerous, I know but it's really necessary to keep my base from being cracked open like an egg. Also, it lets me move around and avoid the damage a lot better than being stuck in my own base. Soon, we have every single coil hooked up to the piles with the hardened flux ducts. Next, we're gonna have to go full electrician mode. We start to lead the flux ducts away from the piles and make sure we don't cross any of the cables. To make this a lot easier, I'm gonna run the cables through the floor underneath the turbine. Then I'm gonna continue to run them underneath the walkway on the side of the reactor. Finally, we get into the back of the bunker itself and hook the cables right up to all the other machines. So finally, 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 on day 86, we're ready. I take one last look around, making sure I did everything right, and I thought I did. I know there are some weak spots, but for right now, this will have to do. Now guys, remember, I already fully loaded the reactor way back on day 60. And yes, I forgot, and I add another 12 pellets. This isn't good. So to start a fission reactor and overhaul, you have to have all of the primers all turned on at once. We go around and activate each one of them one by one. Then once we flick this very last one here, the reactor will go critical and start making steam. Okay, I think I've done everything right. So, I mean, I've done everything I can. So, I mean, here, I guess here we go. Ooh, ooh. Uh, okay, 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 okay. That's on. That's not. I mean, now it's on. It's on. There's no stopping it now. Wait, why does it have 100 heat? That should. That should be zero. So now, just like in a real fission reaction, we can't stop the reactor with a switch. We have to wait till the fuel runs out. We don't have any control rods after all. But I make one little mistake, and it turns into one big problem. Oh, dude, why isn't this going over? Hello? Why isn't this moving over? Why isn't this going through the pipe? Uh, oh no, 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 And, come on. Everything has to be perfect for it to work. And I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. And then it hits me. So quickly, I grab the multi-tool and I hurry. Okay, 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 okay. Not overheating, it's not overheating. Okay, okay, this is, this is gonna work. Oh my god, this better work. Yep, 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 there's steam in there. 
Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, it works. It works. I think that it... All we have to do is turn this on. Okay. It, it's working. It's working. That's okay. That's okay. Ooh! Yo, 2 million RF! Okay, I... But this also this is going to be a problem. Sure enough, the reactor is working amazingly. And while the exhaust isn't being dealt with properly, I was just a little too happy to be worried about it right now. Dude, if that hits if that hits if that fills up that's really bad. It's an NF Okay, the problem is it's still going. It's still going. Why is it still going? I was however getting a little worried about the amount of pressure building up inside of the reactor. I didn't know it at the time but I had loaded double the fuel that I thought, and it was running much longer than my little test run was built for. Okay, um, oh no, now this is filling up too. Is it stopped? Yep, yep, yep. This is gonna fill up. And then this is gonna fill up too, and then, and then it's gonna melt down. Why is it, why is it keep going? Ooh, that's not good. No, 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 no. I don't know. No, 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 like this. Now, the reactor is quickly starting to overheat, and if this bar fills up, melt down. I don't want to... Okay, I don't really want to do this. This is so dumb. This is a huge waste. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's still full. Wait, 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 wait. Is it... It's not filling up, though. It's not filling up. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Finally, the reactor runs through all 24 of its pellets. Is it? Oh, jeez. Dude, that was too close. I filled it up with too much fuel. Yep, I filled it up with too much fuel. Now the turbine will continue to fill up with exhaust steam and shut down over here on the outlet. So we need to fix that. Or this partial meltdown will happen every time we turn on the reactor. Okay, so step one to fix that is we're gonna make super laminar fluid pipes, which are, well, they're pretty expensive, honestly. This means we're gonna have to spend a little bit of time mining obsidian, but soon we get enough hardened glass to make a few more pieces of pipe. And yes, it is a total of five hardened glass for one piece of pipe. Next, we're gonna have to make a universal bin to deal with all of that exhaust steam. Now, I just wanna take a note right here. I wouldn't do this if I were you playing nuclear craft. This steam is still extremely useful, and again, it could be used in an immersive engineering turbine to basically double your power output. But for this 100 days, I just don't have enough time to make that, so we're going to have to get rid of the steam to prevent a meltdown. The bin takes silicon, which means we're going to have to process cobble into sand. And while we're waiting for that, we get out all of the lead we have left, and we start to make some better piles. And now we can really see, with just how much power was cranked out of that reactor, and just how much of it went to waste, we're really going to need a better battery storage situation. But sadly, once again, we run out of lead. A tough alloy pick and head out. I will take a second here because right before I leave, I wanna get all of the batteries set up with at least what we have working. After all, I still want some power running because I want these machines to be processing while I'm gone. So I set them up the best I can with four advanced piles and I even throw in a few basic ones too. Then, hopefully with slightly better results this time, we throw the switch. Looking good, if I don't say so myself. And while the exhaust seam does very quickly fill up and force the turbine to shut down, the batteries have stored up a ton of power. With only 12 pellets in, we don't have any risk of a meltdown either. Now we can add the silicone to the graphite, but we have 100% run dry of lead. So now we're off. So we run out, and of course we focus on getting lead. Man, I'm, I'm so focused, I don't even notice my mining fatigue or that insane radiation sickness. I mean, jeez. I was so panicked about the meltdown and got so much tunnel vision, I'd forgotten about it. We craft up the universal bin, then we add it to the exhaust. Trouble is, if it's touching the cables like that, it will actually delete all the RF as well as the steam. So putting it here would be no good. But we need all of that exhaust steam to quickly vent out and get up to the bin. So we're gonna have to set the bin a little off to the side and we're gonna have to run fluid ducts to get all of the exhaust into the bin. And yes, we're gonna have to use that super expensive laminar because it is a ton of steam that, that needs to be moved out all at once. Finally, while I'm out mining in the middle of this beautiful cave, I discover... Oh, oh no, no, oh, oh, oh. 
Dude, I got scared. I can't believe I just... That's embarrassing. I almost died to radiation poisoning. Yeah, that's embarrassing. I mine far, far away from the blast site so that I don't get any more radiation, but also so I can get fresh ores. Then I head back to my absolutely stunning home. Wow. Wow, look at this. Dude. Oh, wow. Wow, look at this. Look at the difference. You can see like a clear line. Wow. Look at this. You can see this, this used to all be under snow. You can see right where the radiation stopped at the end. Whee! Splat. Back at base, we can finally get our lead into the manufactories, and we can make our very last pieces of super laminar pipes. Now, we can connect the reactor to the turbine, and the steam will not get backed up in the reactor anymore. With all of these pipes leading in and out of the turbine all the way to the bin, this is an extremely solid setup. All we have to do to upgrade it now is to make our piles into DU piles. We add this one crazy DU pile to the back of the turbine, and we start the whole setup again. The exhaust is flowing out perfectly, and the pile is quickly filling up with millions of RF. And yep, everything's going up perfectly, dude. And we have all the power we could ask for. We did it. Dude, it's worth it. This is, I'm proud. And now, one last upgrade. Like I said earlier when we were making the reactor, this isn't 100% correct. It's technically 100 heat positive. So I'm gonna add two more iron sinks up in these small holes at the top of the reactor. And now the reactor is 100% heat neutral. It's perfect. Now that the reactor is working like the beast it is, I spend some more time making fuel, moving all of the oxygen over and enriching all of the uranium. It feels pretty good. We make an additional 50 plus pellets and fill the infuser. We should be set for life with this. I then add 12 pellets, but before we start it again, I make a fuel reprocessor just to recycle all of my depleted nuclear waste. And we add that just right in here. We don't want to walk too far with all that nuclear waste in our hands. Then we might as well test it out. At the start of day 91, one more time, hopefully everything goes right this time, we start the reactor. And now, officially, we have zero net heat, which is good. Oh, no, 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 really? Oh, dude, what is, what is going on? You were working. Oh, all right. Okay, okay, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. Whew. Soon, the reactor is pumping out over 4,300 RF per tick. All the piles are charging up nicely. With this, we can officially say we've achieved nuclear power. And on top of it, we're even being pretty responsible and recycling all our nuclear waste too. We should still definitely be safe though and keep on making some rat away since, you know, I guess I forgot to do that. Finally, I get a bit overboard and start to make the next level of flux. We make a fluid transponder and another magma crucible. Honestly, this is a little bit of overkill. The hardened flux sucks flux carries about 4,000 RF, and the turbine only puts out 4,000 in total. But if we turn it on when it's fully filled with steam, it can make in a very short burst of time about five times that RF. So if we don't get the best flux sucks we can, a little bit of the energy, you know what? It's just, a, it's just a very small amount of help that you really don't need to do this. Even if it does help out just a little bit, this really isn't that necessary. However, pretty soon we do have a good amount of these redstone energy flux ducts to help with the turbine. But we really need to focus on making defense for the last eight days of this playthrough. So once again, we're gonna be turning to our classic trusted open turrets mod to make automated turrets. With this much RF, of course you guys know, I'm already going to go straight for the lasers. Now, these turrets, they need obsidian, so here we are. We have enough of that, and we only need a few little bits of glow dust. Finally, we will need some quartz, because tier 4 needs them, and to make tier 5, you have to make all of the tiers below it. We've got freaking laser beams. See guys, even my live humor is pretty cringy. In addition to the turret base, we need to actually make the gun itself. We get the barrel pretty quickly, but we're stuck on the chamber, and once again, we gotta spend way more time than I'd like to mining obsidian. Then, finally, we get our tier five chamber, and we can finally make our laser. I start out by drilling a hole right in the front door that's only big enough to fit the cable to power this energy suck. Good news is, we only wanna put this right above the entrance. The bad news is, it's night, and the ghouls are gonna make this really tough. For now, let's play it smart and stay inside. 
This does give us a little extra time to run the cable all the way through the bunker, through the lab, and connect it to the reactor. But we're still going to have to wait till day to set it up. And here it is. So now we can run the cable up to a pretty good spot that covers the entire entrance of the valley. The laser has a range of something like 60 blocks, so I think this should be great for this little area. Now that's set up, it's a pretty good defense, but we should get working on our next laser. And we can even get the entire tier 5 base done, but once again, obsidian. We take all of this high powered redstone flux and connect each coil to the DU panel on the back of the turbine. Then of course, we do the same thing on the closer side. Finally, we get our second laser. To power it, we're going to have to start the reactor up again, so we throw in a few more pellets. Dude, is it? Is it messed up? There's, there's a part of me that kind of just wants to make some plutonium fuel and just see what happens. Like, is that, is that dumb? How much RF is it? How much, how much is it? Oh, now nah, we can't make that. But instead of microwaving myself to death, I decided to get working on the second laser turret. I decided that this one should be placed directly over the inner bunker. After all, this is where most of the parasites have been dropping down, and they come straight to basically wherever I'm standing. It does seem like they can pretty much sense me through the walls. As long as we can run our reactor enough and keep these things charged up, this should make us pretty safe. Honestly now that we're this far into the video, I think it is a good time to talk about how much I want to use a thorium reactor, get a quicker small reactor, and then maybe even make a nuke. If you guys like overhaul, I'll do 100 days and try to do both of those. And right now, I really could go for one. Oh, they... I think... No, 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 no! It's in... It's inside! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, dude, it... It... Oh, come on! Really? It just destroyed. Dude, it just took a huge chunk out of the reactor. Bro, if, look how close it was to hitting the cells. Okay. Um, at least it has some pieces. I wonder if this one has... Yeah, this one. Okay. And it has the, the DU pile too. That's insane. They can literally drill from like so far away and get to you. It's kind of like, that's that's a little OP, honestly. That's wild. Yeah, look at that. There's still uranium in these cells. Dude, if it... I mean, it's already bad, but it would have been... If it had gone any closer, it would have been really bad. So we quickly start to replace all the blocks on the back. But one catch. The cyst doesn't hold non-block items. That would be like the expensive fluid pipes and flux ducts. Yeah. You know what I just realized? It... It didn't save the fluid pipes or the, uh, oh, sh oh no, I didn't even realize this is still on. Oh, that's bad. Uh, I got to stop it. I got to get, I got to get it out. So unfortunately, now I need to hurry and get all those super expensive laminar done fast. The reason I need to do this quickly is because the steam is building up in the reactor and I know it has a ton of fuel still to run. If this fills up, we could get a meltdown. So pretty quickly, we get them in place and I feel much, much better. Now, as soon as I see that the steam is starting to flow out of the reactor, I start to set up the DU piles again. Next, I go to make that redstone energy flux again and get the coils all hooked up. This time, I'll admit it didn't go too bad, but if one of those reactor cells was pierced, it could have gone a lot worse. Add to that the fact that I acted so quickly and fixed everything kind of saved our butt right here at the end. Now, we're grabbing some beads and still making sure we have enough fuel to keep everything going. But after yesterday, in the back of my mind, I keep on thinking about being attacked from underground. So, I have an idea. A lasery idea. Of course, that means we need more obsidian. But soon, we have a full Fallout Vault going on here, as we get our Mark IV laser turret hanging in the bunker. And so, on day 98, we set out for our very last mining run of the 100 days. But then I see... Oh, oh wow, this is a... this is the volcano. This is... It's, so it's been like blown up. Because the new kid it, so it's all messed up. And it's so close, dude. Look how close this is. Like, there's this little gap right here, and then there's our bases right there. It's wow. That was so close. It is kind of crazy to think 
I've been, it's like 30 hours of gameplay and it's just it went from a frozen a frozen wasteland to a nuclear wasteland it just completely 180 it's kind of crazy day 99 we're almost done i have no problem spending day 99 in the nether away from the parasites honestly this was a pretty good this is pretty legit like i'm actually pretty proud of what we got done here the full-on reactor and all against the parasites finally we get our last tier 5 barrel followed by our last tier 5 chamber craft up the turret and add it to the fully charged base now we have our true vault tech vault horrible science experiments and all i think that's it i think it's that's 100 days right i think so oh that's not good oh wow dude there's like a huge hole right to the sky meanwhile the world is literally crumbling around us. If we make it to day 100, I don't think we'll make it to day 101. <gasps> whoa, look at that. They do look at that. Look at how much, whoa. Look at how much space they've moved. They took a huge chunk of this mountain out. <gasps> no, no, no. Oh, oh my God, he's coming straight out of the gore. Look at this thing. Look at that thing. Oh my God. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's still coming. Oh. Oh my. Yo, what was that? That was crazy. That was like, oh look at it, dug all the way. Look at that. It dug a tunnel from like, way underground straight into the base. Dude, that's crazy. But it held. We, we made it. We I don't know why you guys are like cherry flavored. That's kind of... <laughs> we just killed one of the strongest parasites in the game. And our base is still standing. Well, kind of. As a reward, I have my last chicken pot pie. I'm not sure if this is honoring my chickens or desecrating them. Eh, it's delicious either way. And after that last fight, I realized that this playthrough is one of the closest we've ever come to outright failing. But we didn't. We just barely held together. Hope you guys liked my little live recordings there. I might try to get a little bit better with that in the future. But for now, if you did like it, or you want to see more overhaul, just let me know down in the comments. Either way, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching.